Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Flank. I'm joined by the one and only the human turret, the world champ himself, one of the best ARs to ever do it. Give it up for Sam LaRue, a.k.a. Octane. We got some of the best analysis in the game, the world champ himself. Give it up for Christopher Duarte, a.k.a. Parasite. We got the one and only, the multi-champion, the multi-world champion, a legend icon to the Cold Duty space. Give it up for Patrick Price, a.k.a. Aikson. And of course, we got the one and only, the executive producer of the flank. Give it up for Benjay Nassim. Gentlemen, a little emergency flank, a little uh, unexpected flank, but we're like, fuck it. Let's run one tonight, and here we are, guys. Here we fucking are. Sam, how you doing, bro? You doing all right, or what? I'm doing fucking fantastic there's a oh, lot of lots to talk about today the mm -hmm. most amount of stuff to talk about today i'm excited yeah no, definitely a lot going on in the call of duty community chris what are you i see you smiling over there how you doing brother you doing all right i think sam's being a little sarcastic but there was some drama going on today uh we got some ga talk and uh i don't really know what else we're talking about i just i just spawned in bro like i don't know what's I going just on spawned spawned in. In. yeah okay Benjay, I saw Chris you were out on a, on a golf course looking at the solar eclipse. Did you have those glasses on or no? Yeah, so we went out to uh, Ashland, which is about like an hour, 20 minutes north of Columbus, northeast of Columbus. More like in the line of the total eclipse because Columbus is like right on the edge of it. Right. And yeah, we had the glasses. I had like a camera filter, so I put on my phone so you could see it. And yeah, yeah it was crazy. We, we played the round. We got to like the 15th hole. We stopped at the top of the hill, wait for the eclipse. It got crazy dark. Uh, and then we hit, I had these glow-in-the-dark balls, and then I popped my fucking drive with the glow-in-the-dark balls. Yeah, dark I did see ball, the, like the glow-in-the-dark balls. I did see <laughs> that. That was a cool idea, <laughs> though. It was a really... So was, was it, it was actually idea. dark, dark? Like, oh, was it actually dude, it dark, guys? It was, it was, it was pitch. It was pretty much, like, close to midnight dark. Like, it was hard to tell on camera because you had the filter on. So with the filter, it literally looked pitch black. No, but then I took the filter off once the total hit. I took it, I basically took it off right before total, and then turned around to see how dark it was. And obviously, the camera's gonna make it a little bit lighter. Because there's there's obviously some stuff going on with the sensor, but Tom, it was like, yeah. it was basically like pitch fucking dark, and That's it was weird insane. afterwards, as like the partial was you know it was closing off past the total, and it was just weird with the lighting. It got cold, like it was just a very I'm never gonna experience anything like that in my life, and I'm glad that we decided to go out, touch some grass, play some golf, and watch the eclipse. Did, did anybody else see it? Like Sam, Chris, Pat, Bro, did you guys see it this was shit? It was sunny, beautiful day, an hour before the eclipse started. Clouds everywhere, can't see no shit. And way. then right when the eclipse ended, like where we're at, clouds are gone. Yeah, that's, I, what, that's what my family was saying. That's what my mom was saying. She was saying the clouds ruined it. I uh, I peeped. I don't know what everyone's so excited about though. Like I've seen Porter <laughs> enough for one lifetime. I don't need to see him again. Bro, yeah, that's crazy. Crazy. Yeah, that's like, nah, he's not even. Bro, come on, he's working out. He's winning races we, and shit. Come on, Why are we roasting Graham? I'm a nah, guy. Looking nah, good nah, right now, see, man. Yo, 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 Chris, Chris, did you get that? I think Chris got it. I don't think anyone else did. What do you mean? What happened? Yeah. Eclipse was Porter's original COD gamer tag. Oh, oh yeah, we're yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, COD bro, the land what? before the dinosaurs, bro. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I, was I thought you were calling it actually was. That, It was that, a quick, if you know, ball tag. Yeah, that threw me off, Slay. I wasn't Slay. alive back then. How you doing, Pat? <laughs> How's everything, bro? What's going on? Uh, yeah, I'm doing good, you know. Uh, you guys are running surprise flanks without me, so yeah, I couldn't miss this one. But <laughs> Man, We tried We tried uh, to find you, Pat, I, we, yeah, but it was Easter, very last second. Easter day flank you is crazy. You were nowhere to be found, bro. bro. We were actually worried about you. <laughs> bro, no, I, we, we I was worried about you, Pat. I was worried about you, bro. I didn't know we were running a flank, guys. I don't know what to tell you. No, it was a holiday, bro. It was a holiday it special, happened, Pat. Easter version. It was a holiday special. Yeah, no, no, no. You definitely... It was I, a last I, second all thing, All I know though. is I checked it out, and I was getting a bunch of tweets, and everyone was like, never miss a flank again. <laughs> Doug was yapping. That's, bro. Just, oh, that's all the uh, messages. Yeah, yeah. Doug, Doug was fucking It's on actually one. crazy that you say that, bro, because the, we actually had an instance today where Doug was... It all comes full circle back because Doug was yeah, yapping today does. too, literally two was hours he? ago. Yeah, he was well, just well, well. Him and Slasher were on the Breaking Point pod and they were going back and forth a little. Bit. Slasher came out and said a whole bunch of stuff in the Boston camp, and then Doug kind of got in there. And man, a, a lot happened, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Doug's in here right now. He's in the chat. Ben, I kind of let you kick things off. Well, what happened today? What happened well, today have, with all that we stuff? Have Austin, we have Austin in here, so oh. Austin, thank you for for joining with us. What's good, gentlemen? Oh, what's, up? Hello. what's up? What's up? What's up, Austin? What's up, man? What's, up, man? what's going on? Nothing much, man. Just back in Cali. Mm -hmm. Feeling good. Working out again. It's good, man. It's w. good. Playing some games. Back much in Cali's all, nice, Austin. Everybody talks shit, yeah, but back it's in nice. Cali. Cali's nice. Man. Oh, dude. Nice I missed here. it, man. Northern Cali's probably nice. 
So Wait, what? Where, where were you before? Texas? In cold ass Boston. Ooh. Damn. In the winter, that's oh, tough. Oh shit. Yeah. Yep. That's tough. Well, so, at least now you're in Cali with the at least decent weather. I know people in Cali were bitching the last couple weeks about the weather being ass, but I assume it's better now. No, it feels great out right now. Yeah, I mean, also while while you're here, I was we were just talking about it, but obviously we all saw what happened on the Breaking Point pod with with Ace and Tactical dope Rab check. and, and yep, Dope Check with Trey Boy Cardi. Uh, what's going on, Austin? What kind of break everything down? I I know uh, there was kind of a lot of it, but I feel like the floor is yours. I feel like a lot has happened, so you could pretty much just start us off wherever you want to start off. But the floor I mean, is yeah, yours. pretty much everything I said on there. I just like I said on that podcast, like uh, I w- it wasn't sitting right with me the stuff that was being said. Um, people calling people rats and stuff, acting like we were just leaking a bunch of stuff, which was just not true. I don't. I haven't seen any proof that it was true. Uh, I saw a clip from after we were dropped. That's about it. Um, and then yeah, so I was like, you know what? I'm actually gonna go say some things because I don't like this like narrative that's being drawn out and like the bullshit that's coming out was kind of just rubbing me the wrong way, pissing me off. So I was like, let me actually go say some stuff, and that's kind of what I did. Well, I think to summarize some of the stuff you said, and I recommend people go check out the Dub Check podcast. I'm sure the ball will be up. Shortly, but basically you talked about you know how you and uh, the other players on the team other than snoop and the coaches have you were guys posted that were kind of unified on wanting to make a change maybe you know move snoop out of the starting roster maybe in a more comfortable situation for him um and that was a decision that was made um by ownership really by the the organization is that a correct characterization of placed on the show yeah pretty much yeah yeah yeah, I feel like uh, well, the I feel like the way that the whole Boston camp was was being run. I mean, Doug definitely has been very vocal about like I, I guess for me it's like who's running the camp, right? Just because like the way that Doug talks a lot, I always feel like that he's he's actually running it, like he's actually the GM or or whatever it is. Um, I I know Ace was kind of asking him like what what's his role, like what does he do? Is was he kind of being like that? What was what was they saying? Shadow GM was that the term? He yeah, was that's using? what he was saying. I don't know. Doug wasn't really giving many answers, and from my experience on the team, I didn't interact with Doug at all. Um, he wasn't talking in our scrims. He wasn't a part of anything to my knowledge. So I'm kind of stumped where this is coming from. But maybe he's taking on a larger role now. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, but he's like a spokesperson. Cause I think I, it's I PR, like, yeah. I feel like Dins and Zed aren't very vocal, um, and really haven't been. And no one else. I mean, I know like Adam Morrison, like Boston guys are all all cool, but they're not very public facing. So I wonder if that's part of it. Yeah, maybe. You think you think Doug is trying to do like some PR move or something, Pat? Where he's trying no, to no, I'm like, just go, saying go like, like, like the Boston I, Bridge I talking like, head. I feel like that's an, an uh, a role they don't have on the team. Like regardless of what he is, was, or becomes, right? I think like Boston still kind of needs that role because, I mean, like, dude, out even in the past years since Boston's gotten to the league, they haven't really had a public facing like person. Yeah. Other than the team, like even their GM Dins, like he's not very uh, vocal. Like you'll see him tweet every now and then, but like. Um, I feel like we don't hear much about them internally or what's they, going they on or podcast, what their plans are. Didn't they not? I don't know if they're still doing it this year. They had a podcast last year, right? They do sometimes. They have a yeah. few episodes, I think. I but not like it. a ton. But but I, I hear you though, Pat. Like this is the thing is is, you know, Doug's entitled to, you know, his opinion. I know obviously he played with a bunch of people in the organization when he was you know, pre retired on that on that amateur roster. And obviously, you know, you know, Doug's kind of talked on this show and on that show and on his stream about Maybe, you know, his sort of ambiguous role before the change, now after the change, whatever. Uh, I'm just unsure based on what's been said if this is a case of Doug freelancing and kind of letting those opinions slide, which he's entitled to, or if he's actually speaking on behalf of the org. And if he's speaking on behalf of the org, I don't know how y'all feel. And Sam, I want to go to you. Like, do you feel like he did a good job of telling their side of the story? Or do you think... <laughs> I think this is kind of a mistake on his part. Absolutely not. Doug said absolutely nothing when we had him on the show like a week ago or whatever. Like I, I feel like we asked him some pretty direct questions and he gave us zero direct answers. So uh, to hear Austin say that he had no personal experience with Doug while he was on the team, while Doug was saying that he was very hands-on and was in the VOD and doing all this stuff, kind of just counteracts everything that was being said a week ago. So um, there's two sides of every story, or well, three sides now with the truth, but... Yeah, it was just a, a weird situation. Um, 
But I've, I had a couple of questions for Austin, unless anyone else wants to go. No, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Um, well, the main one being was just like how the team was going prior to the change. Because I think like, obviously we come in here and we say a lot of shit, but I was curious like with our assessment of the team and how like Snoopy's dynamic was going and <clears throat> um, like how you were slotted on the team to kind of help develop rookie talent. Like how were things going in the camp and like the progress of that up to the roster change? I don't think there was very much progress personally. I think it was pretty stagnant throughout the whole time. Um, I think, I mean, some of the things I said on there, like, bro, it's just so hard to be confident in your roster with some of the things like going on in practice in a day to day. And I don't yep. think anyone really had any sort of confidence in their in themselves or in each other because like consistent mistakes uh some of the things i went into on that other podcast like bro it's just not possible to be confident like nothing was like sticking to build off of yeah like we it just we couldn't like progress move forward like we're just stagnant the whole time i have one question but it's more like a request can you elaborate on the thing that you said where because i swore there was a clip where you said People didn't know spawns. Yeah, we like, didn't know the spawns. Like we like, thought. I feel like that's being overblown, or like blown out of proportion a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is it not? Or am I? What mistaken? do you mean by that? Like, like, like not knowing spawns is as opposed to like not. Like okay, like, like there's a difference you, between like not out knowing out anything. Okay. Or, hey, I, I just have a question. Like okay, I have a question for you, Sam. Can I get an what, example? What are the spawns on P3 Karachi? Uh, bridge P3, and red. Okay. Okay, we got that wrong. Bridge okay, red. Okay, we're tweaking. We, okay, we put a spawn in the back of the hill. We put a spawn, so I don't even remember. I just saw the back of the hill one and then was blacked out. Like, we, <laughs> like, bro, like, it's not being blown out of proportion. Okay. I was, uh, so I was curious because I thought that, like, social media was doing their thing where it was like they were making a simple thing seem worse. Like, he didn't pick up on a spawn in a game or something. Like, not no, no, knowing no, no, no. spawns is fucking. Okay, to, to, play, to play devil's never advocate, mind. though, I mean, I don't, I don't blame him. Shit, these spawns suck. No, they do suck, but, like, that hill is the most straightforward hill in the spawn game. spawn in two places. There's a bridge spawn, and there's, like, a I've diner, like, shit, bus spawn. There's, yeah. I've seen and then there's some, some emergency, like, huts and low coop, and that's it. <laughs> I don't know, Pat. I've seen some shit, man. I've seen some shit. <laughs> I mean, we've seen some fucking shit in these maps, bro. I mean. Okay. But, but I'm not even asking for, like, all the emergency. We weren't asking for, like, the emergency spawns. The, yeah, yeah. It was just the basic, you know, give me the couple spawns on this hill. So yeah. are you saying? So you saying the players, players didn't know that, or was it the coaches? Player, Lord, they must yeah. have been through some shit. There's no, there's no way they ever spawned in the back, and they were like, "Yo, this is a spawn point." <laughs> <laughs> That's never even occurred. <laughs> yeah, That's, yeah. So That's like again, possible. like. It's very oh, stagnant man. practice environment. I mean, I mean clear, clearly there like was that. a there was a disconnect between the original three, meaning you, Asim, and Preston, because that, that's what you were saying right in the breaking point pod that you guys were all on the same page here. To my knowledge, we were. <laughs> to Doug's knowledge, we were not. But, I mean, actually, well, I'll take that back. It, it was that way well, with 100% certainty. I, I'll say it this mm -hmm. way because I think we all can agree, like, this is just a cob player thing. People will tell you to your face one thing, but they could definitely be saying something behind your back. So for me, like, it's hard to take you at your word for that. Not that I think you're lying or not that I think that's the case, but until, like, I hear Asim, Asim and Preston, like, if they join this call right now yeah, yeah. and vocally said, yeah, I agree, it was us three, like, I, it's kind of like something that you, you have to take with a grain of salt because I, I fully believe that you could have felt that way. They could have made you feel that way. But things behind no, closed fair. doors weren't that way. That's mm. fair. People are usually like that. They'll say what you want to hear to your face yeah, and yeah. then go to... But uh, I'm pretty confident. I would put a lot of money. Well, a lot of base... got dropped. I think he was also <laughs> in that camp. But... Yeah. Well, so yeah. This, this is one I'm curious about. Um, Because you said earlier on the show that it was you guys and the coaching staff. Was it all members of the coaching staff that were unified and... They want to proceed in the roster where some people in dissent. I'm not as sure on that one as the <clears> players, <throat> but I'm pretty sure we all were aligned. If you sat in that practice room every day, I don't see how you couldn't be. But again, I think when it comes down to your job being on the line, you may switch your opinion to save said job. Yeah, once you get to that point, you got to say anything to stay on the team. 
Was exactly. He, was Doug watching your scrims, Austin? Did you know? Apparently, he I don't know. <laughs> Can anyone explain to me what time of the day he was doing that when he's trying to break a pull-up record, streaming ranked play for ten hours? Like he was adamant. Do that you he guys, was he not sleeping? Hands on do you guys do what other teams do, where like you upload all your your vods yeah. to yeah, yeah. YouTube or whatever? Like he could have yeah. been a view. Like he could have. He could have watched some. Yeah. But you like know what it reminds me of like internal affairs. But that wait, might, it, Pat, if it was if he was live there, watching, you, know, you you move into you kind of move into gray a little bit. You you know you <laughs> audit what's going on. If he was live watching, I'd be able to tell because it tells viewer count. Yeah. Like in the so oh, I would right, I would catch yeah. on and be like, wait, who has our link? Because I would be worried. Like you know what I mean? Like why is there more people than us yeah. in the link? That doesn't make sense. So if he's watching it late night, maybe he did watch some. I can't say he didn't. I just don't know what time he had to watch seven hours of scrims a day. Yeah, I think I think it's clear that their their whole way of looking at the camp now is they're trying to just basically build around Snoopy and just reset the whole camp. They're just resetting the whole flow. It seems like Doug's coming in and uh, and trying. Doug's in the chat right now saying he said, "quote unquote I'm Doug Sensor Martin. I do everything." That's what he said. That's All what right. Doug word. Fair enough, That's what Doug put in the chat. <laughs> "Quote unquote." Um, can I explain what you're um, saying, Tom? For sure. Can I explain what you're saying and ask a question to Austin? Yeah. So, just to make a statement first, like, there's obviously a, one of those roster changes you don't like to see because it clearly seems like management just made political. a decision against the, you know, the recommendation of the players, it seems like, pretty unanimously in the coaching staff. So, you're basically, the people that you're paying to run your, your team and get results, like, you're making a decision opposite all those people. There's obviously a lot of trust that gets broken. That situation needs to be rebuilt. You think Austin, they're going to have a work, you know, knowing the scene, knowing veterans, knowing rookies, you think they have a recruitment part problem going forward because now any player or groups of players that go there feel like, you know, they don't have really the keys. They, they, they don't get the trust of management to make roster decisions if things go south. That was another thing that didn't make sense to me because, I mean, obviously it was eventually going to come out. I was waiting till the end of the season to talk more, but then Doug decided to start talking. So I was like, fuck it. Let me just go now because. This gotta play some offense. Look. Yeah, I was like, you gotta play some offense. So I think it's a bad move from that sense too, because you gotta have a way to attract players to your org. And if you don't have a superstar player, which at the moment they don't, they haven't. We nobody on our team has really been a superstar. We're like, I want to go play with that guy right this minute. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And then now with this, if what I'm saying is true, I mean, you have to believe me or not. It's up to you. Um, I mean, I'd, I wouldn't I, want to play for an org that doesn't listen to players, but... I would argue that that would be true normally. Um, and if we didn't have the super discrepancy that we do between the teams, um, like right now it's the top four teams, and then it's you judge every other team independently. And if Boston's the one team that's paying money, I, I like where where I would agree with you, if, if the bottom eight were all paying the same pay grade, then yeah, Boston would be the last team you would want to go to. But because they're paying money, I, I feel like players are always going to choose money. At the yeah, end of the money day. always in this talks. environment. In this well, environment, well yeah. didn't Dante? So Dante, I don't know if Pat, if you saw, but Dante came in at the end. But of I said Austin. outside the top four, he got on the yeah. top four team. Uh, well, if so you, yeah, if you have the opportunity to go to top four team, you're going to a top four team regardless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like you could even say that about some of the bottom eight. Like, if you got less money to play with, I don't know, Gwyn, you'd I'm probably, probably take taking more money. <laughs> Well, depends. I, would, it, I, I would play with Gwyn unless it's like an absurd amount more money. Yeah. I, I mean, think that, like, even, those things always, it's always very situational when it comes to things like that. Yeah. Like, you just, you yeah. pretty much just look at both contracts and just weigh them out. I mean, even if Boston's what, offering more money, what we've seen this year and the precedent that they've set, like they could offer you a great contract, but if you last six weeks on the team, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's just to even expand macro on that. You know, the organization that came in the last roster of the bill because of obviously the situation of the spot, I was going to maybe go to DC, whatever. And they had a good first year, and it's been, you know, a little bit down south, and they haven't really, you know, caught any momentum in really being a factor. And, like, obviously they're chasing that and they're spending money, but that's a thing if I'm a player. If they're offering me the control of the project, in the back of my mind, based on how this situation went down, do you think, obviously you guys agreed, some players probably are, like, now going to have second thoughts if that scenario happens of, like, well, I might just get screwed like Austin and ASIM and maybe other people that are currently on this roster. Josh, before Josh got dropped, like, Oh, these people are going to be reciprocal effects of some bad management decisions here. Just a PR nightmare. This entire situation yeah. is a PR nightmare. And I, and I think that gets yeah. to my thing. I've we talked about on this show. You got to be 
mindful of of sort of the PR narrative around your situation. I think to what you said, Austin, like you were gonna come on the 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 Dope Check Park podcast, regardless if Doug had come on or not. You were gonna come and get your final word. And like Doug put you in a position where you wanted to talk about stuff you weren't gonna talk about at the time, right? Yeah, I, w- I was honestly like, when I first happened, I was like, man, fuck these guys. I'm gonna go on right now and roast the fuck out of them. And then like I cooled off, moved back, and I was like, ah, let's just wait to the end of the year, like try to get on another team, see what happens. I'll talk about it later because I don't really need to like talk about it right now. I feel like. And then I f- I was listening to some of the things being said, and it was just rubbing me the wrong way. Like that term "rat" was getting thrown around, saying we were just saying shit. Well, they just I didn't like the way the narrative was being painted, so I was like, well, now I feel like I have to kind of go say something. Mm. People yeah. should be listening to that because not enough people agree with what you're doing right now. Yeah, a lot of people just let shit happen, and the community spins whatever dog shit they want to say about right. it. Yeah, you. I feel like in situations like this, like if, like in this situation, you didn't start it, Austin. But if things were said, now you have no choice. So you have to come out and like say something, or else it, a narrative just gets spread and it's chalked. So it's yeah, it's yeah, it's over. Yeah, nah. I feel like it was a good thing that you kind of got your side out and stuff like that. I also want to make things clear. Like, I just think Snoopy's a good player. Like, we, we all think yeah. he's a good kid. Like, I feel like a lot. I don't want anybody hating on Snoopy. That I feel like Snoopy didn't really ask for any of this either. I feel like Snoopy's just like doing his thing. Yeah. You know, he's, uh, uh, he's obviously uh, very young 100%. as well. He's, 100%. he's, you know, I, I wouldn't want anybody to to go after him or anything, uh, anything like that. It's just been a very messy situation, to be honest, with this with this Boston camp. But but this is the problem with how Boston's managed this, Tom, is they come out and they complain that you know we're on this anti Snoopy campaign, but they're also setting pressure on him as well by keeping this story go- going on, antagonizing Austin today, and, and talking a bunch of stuff that they may not be in the know about. Like they're also setting this kid up to fail because I think to your point, Austin, on the show, like you feel like Snoop's got talent, but he needs some time to kind of figure out his game, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I said, and I stand by that. I think he's got insane talent. Like, if you just watch his screen, like, he shoots incredibly straight. He's got, like, he's top tier when it comes to that stuff, but he just needs his own style, and that takes time. you got to play the game. on. You can't even, like, learn. Like, someone can't teach you your style of playing COD. You know what I mean? Like, you got to have your own mm-hmm. style, and then they could kind of tailor that style into a game plan with a team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's facts. That's very true. I mean, does anybody have any other questions on the the Boston situation? I feel like at this point, I mean, Austin, you said a lot on the on the breaking point, and I feel like uh, unless you have any other any other thing to say I about the question. situation at hand, go ahead, Pat. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, who did, did were you given a reason? Like, who did you hear from when you when you actually got dropped? And were you what uh, like, were you given an actual reason? Something like the team wanted to go in a different direction or something like that. Some like chat whatever, GPT whatever shit. that, whatever that. <laughs> means. Oh, okay. I mean, I, <laughs> that, when, when yeah. I asked Asim that question, it's not you, it's me. When I asked Asim that question, Asim said that they responded to him and said that he's he was the odd man out. That's what they said. He was the odd man out. Well, he's yeah. the odd man in too, right? Like, yeah, well, I, I mean, know, obviously, yeah. you know, like one. Listen, bro, and I and I know Doug's bringing up clips, but any any clip that I've seen so far is me in the Jersey basement after the fact. Oh, I, after I, I, that's what I'm drive. saying. Oh, I said that in that clip, and I want to be clear. One clip is of is you, not, yeah. One clip is of you. This clip was bro. after people. The roster change had probably already happened. It wasn't announced officially, but the leaks were out. This is post people being off the roster. At that point, there's no we're keeping it internal. None of that bullshit. Like people are out of the circle at this point, and they can talk to people and and kind of say what they want to say bro so right. that's, that's what i'm like, saying that was, that was saying keep it in house but that's a... they weren't in the fucking house on they didn't kicked out right they, they were shits on their shits all over the front right. yard anything i heard was when they Austin got kicked out the house the front yard, bro. <laughs> exactly that's always like, so confused and bro, I, it didn't I, make I said any not sense to clip the jersey basement you don't clip the jersey basement go ahead uh, Doug also on. said multiple times around that we had to make changes because of this basically saying like stuff was getting leaked so we had to make changes which is kind of understandable if someone on the team is obviously talking trash it's getting linked on the flank like i th- i could see that but that's not what happened so i just i'm tired of well, that being was, said was the the thing doug referencing what ben said though because ben didn't you say something like it's somebody on boston that didn't get dropped or something like didn't you say it was something about someone that was still in their camp no i what thought talking, i saw oh, something where are you talking like, about the, are you talking about like, were you referencing, like, what you heard? Like, the rumors you heard about Boston? Like, you said, I think you said something about, like, it's oh, not. it wasn't a player. Wasn't, yeah, yeah it wasn't yeah, a player. Yeah, tweeted, he tweeted Austin something about that. Yeah. I tweeted something? What, what yeah, you said it you, like, alluded to it was something or not, not a player. What? It was, like, a, something like that. It was a, while, a little while ago. It was, like, a week ago you, or something. Oh, wait, which, hold on. 
Way to I'm go, I'm confused man. which which situation you're talking about now. No, I'm just saying, like, because I know it's talking okay. about the rap thing. Like, it, it, I think like that started because you were referencing like like not what Austin like not what Austin was is, saying, is, is not this, what Ace was saying. It was like you saying thing? that there was. I have no idea. I'm it might have been a timer. generalized tweet, it was just, but it was something, something about you, someone was, in like, their camp players. still was talking to you. If, and you had if a source. Someone has a tweet or the clip. Well, I can react to it and speak towards like where I'd heard, like you know, approximately where I'd heard it from. I'm not going to reveal all my sources, but if we're talking about the Jersey basement clip, that's what we're talking about. Like this is post roster change. Yeah, so. the Jersey anything in the Jersey basement is after, is after like roster change. I mean, Asim was dropped, losing full. Everybody was losing full behind it. I was talking to a lot of people about this situation. He was losing. I think it's goal. this. You know, um, what is this? Oh man, Ben J, what is this, Ben? Yeah, ben, yeah, yeah. what it's is this? this? Yeah, that's post roster change. Yeah, yeah that's what. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Okay, yeah, what I'm saying is, if Doug, if Doug was talking about like someone being I a rat, like I think he was saying that like someone in the org, because you said it's not Asim, it's not Austin. Yeah, like someone so, that's still on the team, still in the org, is saying shit. I'm pulling it up. I'm gonna be clear, guys. This has happened a lot in the CDL. When there are decisions that are made in an org, whether, oh, they, are, Quick they, whether they are business decisions, roster decisions, any kind of personnel decisions in an org, not everybody will be in agreement. And some people are frustrated enough to go reach out to people like us on the show and say, hey, I'm really upset. I, you know, here's our side of the story. If you're free to talk about it on the show, you know, cite me as, uh, as someone that is sources, you know, close to the team and I'll do so. And I'll protect their anonymity because people are providing proof to back up what they're saying that they're upset about the situation going on. It's just how it is when this stuff is ugly. And and we talked about this on, I think on the last show, like the only solution those kind of leaks to stop them is just when you're making these decisions, make sure that you're fully accountable, that you address people's concerns internal. If you brush them off, if you're not willing to hear people out, if you're saying my decision is final and people feel like their side isn't being heard, they fought their battle and lost, so be it. Then yeah, that's why, you know, this happens in other industries too. They're going to go out to talk to people external. It is how it is. I think one thing that's just unfortunate about the situation is I feel like Boston buying so into like Snoopy's like campaign here has kind of screwed a couple players. I still think Asim and uh, Slasher kind of roughly dropped that dropped at least performance wise. And then on top of that, like now that like this has happened, um, you know, recently, you kind of like go back and look at it. Like even Capsital Capsital is a really good player and he's been playing really well in challengers and um he was pretty damn good on their team at certain points in their season like he actually had some pretty good stats and i know he hasn't been on the team for a while but like they're them buying into the situation them buying into the situation is like screwing over a couple people and it's well austin know, you said you actually didn't agree with that either right austin the yeah the there, there was some yeah i mean there's some stuff at the major one stuff that happened but uh i thought cap was a pretty good player i actually enjoyed playing wait, with cap. wait what did doug say did you see what he said now what he said. Yeah, Doug said T Dog Smitty was the rat. End of discussion. Is that a joke? Oh, yeah. He's gotta be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's a joker, bro. He's just trolling. Okay. Yeah, I actually liked Cap. I thought he. I think he has potential. And I mean, he obviously has been running challengers statistically. Yeah. Um, and I think he should probably be in the league. I mean, there's a lot of players who should be in the league. That's just the problem of the 12 team system. Um, <laughs> but yeah. 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 Yeah, I think I think that's what it is. Uh, any other questions before we wrap the segment up? No, I awesome. think we need the fucking. No, but I was, go was going to say it's a good time to to reference my favorite quote. Uh, anytime we talk about anonymous sources and stuff like that, got a good good little quote for, just for everybody to remember. Why don't you read long-term. it out loud for us, Pat? It's cut I got off you. On your thing. I got you. Yeah, uh, I'll resize a little bit for you. Okay. Mm-hmm. It ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. Mm-hmm. Just a good little, you know, wise, good little thing man. to remember, you know. Who, who's, who's, remember. who's the quote from? Uh, it's possibly Mark Twain. There's some, uh, there's, there's, <laughs> some, <laughs> there's some debate. Some Patrick Price in there. There's some debate <laughs> that that it was somebody else. It could have been somebody else. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's Patty right, Cakes. Well, I think we can move on from there, Austin. You can obviously feel free to stick around. Uh, if not, if you want to bounce, that's fine. We appreciate it having you on, but we're gonna move on and talk about some other topics. What are you guys talking about? Uh, well, yeah, we're gonna G- stick. What else? Uh, we got these map sets and GAs. Yeah, I'm sure you would love to talk about this shit. Oh, sure. I'll I'll stick around for a little bit. Let me just so, go use the restroom, grab a water, yeah, no but problem. I'll be back. We'll do you guys want to do map set? Or do you want to do the weapon stuff first? Let's do Probably maps. Uh, yeah, you want to do weapons? Sure. I don't care. I mean, we can do maps. So we have a couple of map changes. Um, it's looking like we're going to have two hardpoint changes. First of which, 
Tom, there's a tweet on your screen if you've got the video version of this podcast. Taurus says, Vista Harp on being added to CDL rotation. Uh, it did end up actually replacing Invasion. And then the other change is that Six Star is coming in. And a lot of people thought it might be for sub base, uh, but it actually is for Skid Row. So Skid Row Invasion out. Uh, we have Six Star and Vista coming in for matches starting this weekend. Uh, let's start with you, Chris. What are your thoughts, at least on the hard point side of this map, Paul James? Um, I like that Invasion got replaced. Um, it's sad that uh, that map kind of got ruined even further with the new changes, and we never got a spawn update, so that obviously added to everyone's problem with it. Um, but that's a W. But I personally, it's just unfortunate that Skid Row is getting changed out because Skid Row, I think, pre-patch was fine, and then they patched it now to the point where um, essentially everyone just spawns on new on rotation. So... Um, like it just it just made it so like it's just mega rotate heavy you it's like some hills are damn near impossible to break now um because people are essentially just spawning at the new hill and the spawns are a little bit further out so um it's just getting it got worse um and i don't know why they made those changes we even talked about it when we heard that skid row got changes um yeah. why didn't they make these changes to a map that needed them like invasion why did they make them to a map like skid row i don't know the only thing i ever heard a pro complain about pre um, pre the change to Skid Row was P2. That was the only complaint. Mm. No one ever complained about people spawning out or whatever the hell. Like it was always just about P2, and then they kind of ruined the map. And I felt um, like there was easy fixes to spawns. P2. We've talked about moving the hill down to the bottom of the hill instead of the top of the hill, or, or kind of moving it around somewhere in that lot. But uh, I think me personally, I hated Skid Row. I really hated Invasion. I, I get what you're saying, though, Chris, where you can make changes elsewhere. But the way I look at it is, I like the changes personally. I feel like for me, uh, they were already playing dog shit. So if anybody thinks these maps are dog shit, I think it doesn't really matter. I think it's something new and fresh, and we can all agree. I think from a viewer perspective, those maps are just really not it anymore. Um, and, and I feel like for us, Sam, like we look at it from a different view. All of us. So Chris, Pat, we've all used to play, right? We used to look at it from a different point of view when we were playing. But now that we're watching and we're 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 looking at it from like a viewer perspective, like I can't watch Invasion anymore and, and Skid Row. Like no. I can't watch these maps. Like I can't do it anymore. So I mean, for me, these really maps care should have ever been a hard point map to begin with, right? Like we, <laughs> there's an argument that not a single one of the Modern Warfare 2 original maps should have been a hard point map. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, no, I called I it. I called it before the season started. I said S and D will be fine. We played S and D back in the day. They were good. Control. It's hard to fuck up, even though Control is dog shit. Just like. The game mode essentially is just going to be where the bomb sites are, you give or take. But hard point, they kind of fucked it up on invasion. Yeah, they still did, but hard point was just fucking terrible. Like, like I just couldn't picture a good hard point map, and um, you know, we're getting the whole Cold War treatment where we replace maps, um, yeah. like entirely. From and the and from of the my season. understanding, with this pool hill on Vist uh, on Six Star, is that they're moving this. From my understanding, they're they're gonna make some so changes I, to this I, map. I, I can speak. I can speak to this one. So one okay. nice thing, is I want to shout Activision for this. They've been doing these creator calls usually on the Monday or Tuesday before the seasons drop, where they cover all the changes in Warzone, in you know multiplayer, in COD Mobile, in Zombies. They give you all the breakdowns of what the season, and we can ask questions. And they have you know studio heads. And so from the multiplayer side, they had uh, Greg over from Sledge, and Greg basically talked about this hill and said that you know from their end they understand that you know some people might not like the hill, might not play, and if they got to change it, they're going to change it. They're not hard stuck on just keeping pull hill and stairway of the highway. So. We'll see if they feel like it needs to be changed, how quick it might get adjusted. But I'm glad that they were already like trying to, you know, and, and when everything they say on the call, obviously we can talk about post embargo, you know, they were open to uh, feedback on that if it doesn't really play well, because um, they want to make sure rank plays good and multiplayer is good. Yeah. I mean, they're definitely going to get rid of the, they're going to have to get yeah. rid of the pool hill because it's, it's definitely Fugues. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they, they might be, that's a weird one too, because I'm very curious if, you know, they do patch freeze on the esports build. So I'll be curious, like, if that change comes this week before matches start so they can get that in, or if that's going to be a mid split thing. And then this gets to a weird conversation of, like, are the teams willing to play a new hill mid split? I don't know. That's going to be a I weird think one. On the bridge. I think they'll probably, it will probably, it won't probably move like that far away from where it is now. It'll pro if I had to choose where I would move it, if you guys have played the map, like, just on the other side of the water, like on the yeah, like like bar, like thing. where the courtyard is, where those yeah. like curved walls are, I think wouldn't be a, a terrible location. The spawns for that hill would probably be relatively the same, and then um, it would just be in a better spot, you know, not in the water. So mm. yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, we'll get to sort of how I think this sort of affects top teams. I want to talk about the other game modes. There were rumors that maybe 
we'd be getting a new control map, but apparently a vote went down yesterday, I believe. Um, and it did not get enough votes uh, to pass based on team feedback. Yeah. Of so I do want to say poll. something about this, Ben, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. So with the voting process with the GAs, from my understanding, is that in order for something to go through, it's got it's got to be majority, and it's got to be nine three minimum. So there's the got to be minimum. Super majority is what we call right. It. Super majority. Overwhelming majority. Yeah. Overwhelming yeah. majority. Right. So there's got to be nine votes to come in, and I know some of these votes that have been coming in are eight four and seven five for a couple things. And I think we can all argue here that there's obviously going to be bias coming in from the players, which is fair from a competitive level. Like, I, it's going to be hard to take the bias out of the players, especially when it's coming to maps and guns and, and shit like that. That's why I think it's interesting that maybe we should explore having a, a different way of doing the GAs where the pros are not involved, whether we're deciding maps and, uh, and map set and stuff like that. I don't know if the pros would like that or hate that. But they would I, all hate that. They would hate. I, that's what I was saying before, Sam. I'm pretty sure they would all hate that. But the problem is, Sam, don't you think we always find ourselves in these situations where these GAs are on the cusp and it's like there are we could be some changes being made to the game and they're not being made because it wasn't an uh, overwhelming majority? Uh, honestly, if you wanted to be dickheads, I mean, I'd be even more willing to bet or I'd be even willing to do something like the top four teams get three votes, the top, uh, the middle four teams get two no, votes. Hell, and the bottom no. four teams Wait, what? Yeah, you cannot bro. do that. You can't do that. Hell no. I would. What I would do the, it. Where the f Dante, I would do it. Dante tweeted no. something That is like the this. worst take. That's what Dante was that tweeting. That is the Dante worst fucking that take. I thought that take was terrible, too. That was the worst take, bro. Dante tweeted Either that, that, either, that, 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 that majority, he, he, no. either that or just majority, majority rules L listen i i think I, here's my thought process i, I agree with you sam the problem Dude, when you go no, down I'm that path is the players are going to have an issue but i would say from like the publisher to side of this like the players have never organized themselves in a way they've effectively used their leverage if this were to go down if you want to actually like game plan it out like what it would take is for the players to boycott and honestly like i just don't really see it as long as you create a process where, you know, the players provide really quality feedback. If it's unanimous, then it should be some version of binding. But if there's obviously bias going on and people are vouching for their team situations, but it's clear that the maps are playable, that they are competitive, the integrity is good, the playability is good, there's no issues, then other people are going to have to make that decision. I think ultimately it may lead to more fresher metas, more fresher map pools, and ideally a better experience for the viewers. It may not lead to more viewers, but I think for the viewers that tune in, it'll be better now. I think I think there has to be a fine balance between keeping the game competitive and just being able to add new stuff to keep in people interested, because um, if we're trying to, like, expand, um, we have to make sure that people are playing the game, enjoying the game, because sadly enough, like as the season goes on, like the people that play ranked play and stuff like that or the people that are going to be watch or watch or be more invested in the CDL stuff. There's got to be a balance. And that's, I mean, obviously you can say that maybe I'm kind of biased here because I don't actually compete anymore, but at the same time, like our esport always like dies as the season goes on. And I mean, you got to think that some of it is just lack of interest. Like people just get tired of watching the same shit. Uh, people yeah. get tired of playing the same shit. Um, we got to try to add things whenever we can and um just another thing about that like whole um majority it, i i feel like it should probably be like eight to four if not just majority like that way more things pass because personally i'm just tired of like watching you know and playing the same game like for the entire season wait Can jp said Go ahead, Austin. jp said why is it seven to get a map in but nine for a ga i thought it was just nine for like kind of anything it's not seven to get a map in you guys had seven to five for uh the control and it didn't pass yeah, I'm confused. Yeah, so that's so because it, it had for five for then? yes. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. was it five for yes? Oh, I thought it was yeah. seven for yes. My bad. So it's the other side that, yeah, the order. But that's my again, bad. That, so seven, so seven's a simple majority, right? We have 12 teams, so seven means you know you get more than half. Nine, I kind of understand the GA logic with nine. I think that was also, I don't know if you or Lamar, someone came on here a while back and explained the nine number, and it seemed like really sound logic. But as we're feeling out this year, and we'll get to weapon GAs in a second. It's becoming clear that I think on the publisher side, it's time to start thinking about how to make this process a little bit more efficient, keep the speed, but take the bias out of the player's hands. I have a question for this group because I have not heard anything about this. We haven't talked about search yet. Do we know if the S&D map poll is changing at all? I have heard nothing. So up to this point, I would assume no. Yeah. yeah. I think it's though the S&D map poll. They didn't like control either, right? I think, the, I think the S&D map poll isn't yeah. bad outside of... Uh, terminal i think terminal is the only weird one i may be again biased personal bias i just think it's very one-dimensional 
Um, yeah, people are saying six star. Six star should be in there. So is that where? Where are you guys hearing that chat? But go ahead. Have you guys? Uh, well, actually, Austin's line here. I'm curious if any pros have. Oh, well, I don't know if you've like scrimmed. Obviously, you like because you were oh, out in the Boston. Oh, but my God. I was. Yeah, I was Jesus gonna ask Christ. if anyone's uh, oh, tried like six star search because I think they're playing it right now in the tournament. So they're trying oh, okay. it. Okay. So they're trying okay. it now. So that's cool. Yeah, maybe maybe we see that coming, which would be interesting. Uh what's uh let's get let's finish off this topic on the map chase. Uh obviously with these changes it might benefit my heart some teams amongst I think probably you guys probably want to talk more about the top four. Who do you think benefits from these changes and who do you think? Toronto Ultra. Explain Sam. They auto veto invasion hardpoint and they were decent at Skidrow, so it kind of hurts them there, but removing an auto veto is always going to be best case scenario for I a think... new map being added to the pool. I think this potentially hurts Optic. Optic played a lot of Invasion, and they obviously played a lot of Skid Row. So uh, that's two maps that they were really good at. Or played a lot in Hardpoint um, prior. So like that auto, that vetoing Rio thing that they were doing against teams to force some Invasions and Skid Rows in there. Like they're just going to have to get better at that map against the top four teams because they know teams like FaZe and that and uh, Toronto will play them on it. So do you guys, do you guys think the top, the yeah. survived do you guys think well? the top teams are just all going to get better from these map changes? I feel like they, they might. All the top uh, four. Uh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that in a second because I want to tie some in. I feel, like, I feel like the top wanna... four teams with the map changes, like I, feel, I feel like you get all those cheesy maps out the way and it just makes it more straight up. It just makes it easier for them. Uh, well, tech maybe i mean it just really depends um on like the adapt like how quickly those teams adapt yeah, like you would think that the, the better teams too. are going to adapt quicker um just by like the way some of these maps play i think like vista will improve a couple of the sub heavy teams that have like really good sub players um as for this map i haven't played it enough um we didn't we didn't get to test it so um yeah i don't really know much about six star at all so yeah, i was talking to javi about it and he said that it was mostly like a two two uh sub AR map with like a situational three sub kind yeah. of thing. Mm -hmm. so, Which always the top nice. teams that can use that three sub advantage example and really own those parts of the maps and those situationals and really carry that momentum. But I thought interesting, like I know we like to talk about top four, but bottom eight teams that I think benefit, especially from the hard point changes, LAG, because I didn't think they were amazing at invasion uh or skid row. Um, so I think they benefit from those new maps, maybe that they can master. I don't know about their play style on those maps, but New opportunities. I think Rocker, Rocker would like, if I remember, were really bad at Invasion Hardpoint. I'm pretty sure they everything were about that team is no. I mean, they're also it, terrible it does, at yeah, Skidrow. It doesn't really matter. They, they got everything about that team. So they, they get a fresh start. We'll talk about their roster in a bit, but they might get a fresh start. Carolina's auto veto has been so, moved. Yeah. So I, so I swear, with Invasion having a lot of problems, wasn't that like the most played map? Like invasion hardpoint. I swear I it was. A, I swear it was, it was the played most a lot map. Yeah, because right. there's not like, like a good watched. side. There's not a it's, good side. It's so like yeah. people will just not veto it and they'll just be like whatever. If they pick it, they pick it. Actually, like, square up map. Because was... Skid Row and Sub Base have pretty bad sides. Like if you pick into it, mm. um, mm -hmm. I Rio, like this... I guess maybe a little bit, but I feel also like this actually, has a bad side too. So actually, it was not. If this is if this, it I have is correct. It was not. It was actually the second most of twenty. What was, was the first? It's the first is actually Rio. This okay. Way. So Rio was played 27 times. So we'll probably see a lot more Rio now. Um, you know, you think about like, you know, teams like Optic and Phase, when you're thinking about hardpoint videos against them, like get removed, but they're probably going to go to Vista, probably good six star, faster maps, less long AR lanes where you can slow them down. And, and Rio, you're going to have to play them on at least one of those. So then we'll continue to see Rio a lot. I want to tie this into the Weapon G thing. Um, because to your guys' point, the meta may shift now. People might figure out how to play more three sub, and obviously, you know, there's been a lot of discussion last week about the SMG and that post patch. It feels like with the MCW headshot nerf, that it feels like the sub is really good at range. So there was a GA vote. There was a whole conversation late night on a bunch of streams. I know Tommy, you were part of that late night yeah, conversation. Yeah, this is where Bruce comes in, like Dashy and Scrap and sib it was it, sam was there it was a lot of ar players which is fine i mean i, I was definitely trying to be open-minded and, and hear everything and and what i don't understand is i guess their argument right now is to take the barrel off the submachine gun uh and to be honest with you i don't think it changes much like when you take the barrel off it makes it a little worse at range which i think is a fair argument from the it's ars the yeah, is to try and make it a little bit worse when it comes to, like, shooting it at range. But it doesn't really change anything from close to medium range. Like, I was using the sub, and I wasn't really feeling much of a difference. And you can uh, still get that those cross-map shots. 
Um, it's just a little bit harder. So I, I didn't think it was a big change. I thought that vote was going to go through. But this is where that GA vote was right on the cusp. And yeah. it ended up not going through because it was an overwhelming majority by, like, one vote. So, yeah. like, you know, I was surprised about that one, to be honest with you, just because uh, I didn't think I, it was a Chris, big switch. But I personally go ahead, Chris. think that they shouldn't touch the rival as it is now, and they should look at ways of making the AR better and in, or introducing a different one. Um, they were pretty adamant about, like, not really introducing other ARs because they're trying to preserve the time to kill. I brought up some arguments as to why it wouldn't change much and how there's better alternatives. Um, one recent one being that I feel like if they're adamant about not adding a new weapon and revisiting those that are banned and GA'd, as we know, like the MCW is literally the only available um, AR in competitive play, they should probably look at bringing back high grain um, to the AR at the very least. Um, so high grain, it buffs your damage ranges and it buffs your bullet velocity, two things that would help the, the MCW at range, because here's the argument, right? Some people on Twitter, like they're like replying to like these GA conversations like, Oh, people, AR players complain when the su when the AR can't kill the sub up close. That's not what they're complaining about. People are complaining that the sub is better than the AR at range. So you have to look at either a assault rifle that is better for range dominant for being range dominant, which is why I looked at the Holger as one, um, yeah. you know, maybe usable weapon. My argument for that was um, it has really dominant range when it four bullets. And on top of that, it's a slower shooting gun. So technically, up close, it would be harder to use because it's going to shoot slower. It's not going to rapid fire as much as some of the other ARs. So that's my argument for that gun. But um, high grain would just help that. It would help extend the MCW's range values out. So you're going to five bullet at a little bit longer ranges. Plus, you're going to get the bullet velocity bonus of being able to use it. And then most people, you got to think, will probably strap on billeted now because with high grain and billeted combination, you're still going to get massive advantages at range. You're going to get um, easier to control recoil. Plus, you're going to lose flash hider, which uh, makes your ADS speeds slower. So you're going to get a buff in a couple of things that I don't feel are OP to the point where it's going to make ARs kill subs up close. It's going to just aid the range fights, which is, I think, the biggest problem with the ARs complaining and on top of that this is the game that's had the worst fucking bullet velocity out of like any COD when it comes Insane. to like the max values I think the max value you get now on an AR with the current attachment metas is probably around like 800 when if you go back to Cold War we had ARs that had a thousand um like bullet velocity when if so like I don't know I think some people are looking at this for the wrong way velocity yeah, yeah, that's, so, a war, yeah, that's, that's a an absurd thing. thing. But yeah. uh, Sam, Sam and Austin. Look where his scan over here, Austin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we talk about X delayed. I, I love that Pat talks about his game that hasn't come out yet. But anyway. Uh, Scott, it's got hit scan. It's automatically. Well, great. We'll play it in 2035 when it comes out. But, automatically better. Got his scan. Okay, fine. The game's not out yet. Anyway, uh, Sam and Austin, better. what are your thoughts on Chris's solution? Or do you guys have any other <laughs> ideas you'd like to try? Uh, you first, uh, Sam. Um, I don't hate the, the high grain idea. Um, the thing that I think is really starting this whole discussion while the headshot multiplier nerf definitely hit, which was needed. I think four bolting, it was just like an insane thing. Um, so the headshot multiplier nerf was definitely needed. I think the main issue with a lot of the AR players is the map pool now. And I think the reasoning that the subs don't want to change things is it was so AR dominant for months to start this game. Yeah. Um, oh, so they were they were a disadvantage for the entirety of this game up until we got Rio Vista now six star. They finally get to use their gun in a way that doesn't feel like they're just fucking cannon fodder running around. Um, so if I'm a sub player, I definitely wouldn't be chomping at the bit to get make my gun worse now that I actually get to exactly use, use it and play the, the game how it should be played. Um, so I definitely get their side of the argument, but um, the MCW definitely feels worse still, even on maps like Karachi and sub base, like you're still going to see more ARs than, than subs. But I think if I'm a sub player in this situation, I'm not exactly wanting to make my class worse as I get three maps that well, are, can actually yeah. play now. I mean, Sam, what do so. you think the, me how the meta is right now? I mean, do you like it, Sam, or do you think the barrel should have went through? You think the barrel GA should have went through? Like, how do you think I want to see how the, how the new maps play. And then I think revisit it, um, revisiting GAs is usually something that doesn't happen. But I think once we get like a decent sample size of our current map pool yeah, and how yeah. things are going, I think that like, obviously I don't, I don't have access to that information. Obviously they've been scrimming it. So mm. maybe that's why they're adamant on the vote, but 
I would at least like to see a sample size of how these maps are going to see if the sub is as insane in a competitive setting as it's being touted. It's it's not yeah. even about like I think the sub should be good. I feel like nerfing so the taking the barrel off the sub it's just gonna ner it's not gonna nerf its recoil much because I was using it um for fun and I'm not a sub player like I'm not fucking simp right and I was still beaming across the map with the sub without a barrel. It makes the game more RNG because you're taking away bullet velocity and. It's just like there be times where a guy's running across your screen. He's not even that far out <coughs> with the sub without the barrel and you would just get no reg like you would have to like lead your shots. I think we're looking at it from the wrong or I think people are looking at it from the wrong perspective. And I think they should keep the barrel in, but they should just give the ARs a little bit more range. I, I really don't hate the high green take. What, like do you, uh, what do the, you think, Austin? The, I was kind of thinking that, too. I mean, I think one of the biggest problems with these new age cards, aside from just the gunsmith, is the hits like no hit scan like. I feel like thing. COD was hit scan forever. That's it's why I hated the SOG people... early on when it wasn't yeah, hit scan. Like, it was terrible. Bro, it's just so much better when it is hit scan. And I don't know. I personally like, I, I've always been a big proponent of the game is the best when your flex player runs a sub on half the maps and an AR on half the maps. Mm -hmm. And however we can achieve that That's is what, what I people, think. People yap that. on World War II, like. Weapon balance wise, it was one of the best cards in the yeah, last it was pretty good. Seven and like, years. I feel like in that, like I feel like in those games, the AR is the better weapon, but the sub is more impactful. Like the sub, you're not cross mapping, but you're running three of them because you're faster. You're getting pushed out more. You're just quicker on the map to rotation and stuff a lot like that. With more subs. Exactly. Whereas yeah. like maybe the AR can't kill you up close, but he's also slower aims in slower he's like doing certain things on the map i just feel like the the flow of the game is always better when there's a true flex player on the map and the game is just hit scan that's why you always see more subs towards the tail end of the year because everyone like understands Learns, the game yep. to the highest yeah. level so they yeah. can play at a much faster that's pace. what i also don't know when you were saying like uh the game's been super ar heavy which it has been but i feel like even at major two we were seeing sub players like starting to take over like, you yeah, know they I mean? were definitely like, doing their thing. Like, I mean, New York was running two subs on one time on a P5 on Skid Row and smoking someone. I, I forget who it was against or what was going on, but I was like, what the hell? Like, bro, that gun is good. How, like, um, yeah. how differently does, because, like, obviously there's a disparity in matches and scrims. Like, how different when you go to, like, a match environment in terms of, like, pace is this game, would you say, compared to, like, previous titles? Uh, I feel like, honestly, I feel like in the CDL era, it's always slowed down a lot in matches compared to scrims whereas i never used to feel like that in like the cwl i like cwl to me scrims matches same thing yeah like but i feel like I in the cdl that. era it's for whatever reason matches are way slower than they are in scrims mm. damn slower matches sense. and this game fucking hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully the newer maps will uh, will speed it up a little bit but... that's why my superstar list was based on land Ah, <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, but, uh, I, but Clay, Clay was mentioning Austin about there being like some weird online cheese now uh, with the with the Dude, MCW. I noticed that too. Yeah, there were right? so oh, many he, people he using Is event. that what he was saying? It was built. I, yeah. I think he's onto something there. Personally, I, Dude, we I brought said that it up in the watch parties. I said it before Major One. I actually had a talk with him at Major One about Billeted probably being better on land. Yeah, because there's something with the. The bullet rig using that gun online, it's kind of messed up. And I feel like on land, you aim in quicker and you don't get the bullet rig issues. So right. it's like natural. It, bullet we, velocity, baby. We, yeah. we could try and check in on that. We have, we have a way to ask the studio on that. That's crazy. And, we, we, and we also, an answer. I think he was also onto something else. I swear their ping tool, there's something fucked with that, bro. I don't know. Every Everyone time I want to play yeah, it, like bro. They're going to add like a weird delay or something. Bro, or... I don't trust that pink tool shit. Yeah, everybody bro, I spawn that, trapped right? Boston and Vanguard for two series straight without them getting a kill. There's something yeah. definitely wrong with that fucking ping tool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. Uh, you're not the only one to, to talk about the ping tool and they say it feels a little weird. And I, people <laughs> yeah. always say the pings, the numbers are always a little weird too. When you when you look at them, like when the match is starting, it well they'll be fl they'll be flickering and stuff. Like they won't just stay on a number. Like they'll flicker. Like I know, like when you load into you, like you'll be on like twenty, and then it'll like we played Seattle. I loaded in, I'm on twenty, and then it goes up to forty, then it goes up to yeah. sixty, and then it stays on like sixty something. Yeah, and I don't know. It's just weird, bro. Well, I mean, there's listen. We're talking about online activity. There's <laughs> there's something called jitter, J I T T E R. When we talk about you know online connectivity, and that's really that you know, um, kind of time delay sort of discrepancy that happens when there's, you know, the, the pipes are being used, uh, the back when the internet's being used. And 
the problem is we have teams playing from the Pacific Northwest versus teams in Florida. Like they're not going to be ideal internet situations. And that's the fortunate truth of this league. We've set up situations where online activity is important. It's for a lot of points. And people are playing in unideal conditions for eventually champ spots on the line. That's why a franchised city based online league makes no sense. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I agreed. Uh, any other thought on this before we move on? Well, the thing with the GAs, and, and one thing that, I mean, realistically, I don't think this would ever happen, but why don't the pros just all get in a call and just talk about the current meta and just try and make a, and try and make a meta that works for everybody, that makes the game the best it could be and makes everybody happy? There, I, I just feel like open, like an open communication call. It has to be a call. It can't be a group chat. It should be a call where everybody's there, where, where everybody can speak and speak their mind and just... Find something where everybody's happy. Whoa, you know, you're wanting everybody There's, to speak their mind. That's that's that's. But Pat, you got to do it like one at a time, and it's got to be organized, and it's got to be, you know, it's got to be done the right way. Like everybody's got to be open minded. I, I and I mean, no offense to the pros, but this goes back to the IQ conversation Tom, that I brought up before. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think, I don't think they're there. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, also well, another issue. On, Chris. I guess it's just me hoping, Pat. I'm just hoping. Yeah. You know. There's Hopefully. also another issue when it Coping. comes to the J yeah. situation that the pros talk about is like so like when it comes to bringing in a new weapon they can't even try that unless they manually set up rules and apparently they're just lazy or people are worried they have different spawns and stuff like that right because oh. once you put on the cdl rules or like the cdl client or something like that a lot of those weapons that let's say you want to try they just aren't available well, so they would have to manually yeah, set so up the rules and they also like, that's, re that's why like revisiting GAs and stuff like that's a problem because they can't even like test it with the CDL rules it, on. This is a double edged sword for sure. Go ahead, Austin. I was gonna say to be fair, that's not on the pros because we don't set up the rules. Like the coaches yeah. are always hosting the lobbies and stuff like that, so it wouldn't even be up to us to do that type of stuff. This yeah. is one of those things where on the Activision side, because I I understand totally understandable, right? The GAs we want to unify GAs with restrictions of the rule set, but what if you want to roll it back? We've talked a lot on the show about. You know, the league or Activision taking more ownership of temporary and permanent restrictions the map pool, but it feels like because if there's a lack of quick flexibility in adjusting the CDL in-game rule set, it's going to cause issues. So something on the publisher side, future iterations of the game to solve this specific problem where your point, Chris, we, we can't go back and try there's some guns because they're restricted I mean, in the rule set. I mean, they can, unless there's actual fugues, right? Where there's like, let's say you play on CDL rules and then take yeah. it off. There's different spawns and stuff like that in which practice would become counterproductive. Oh, for like, you probably um, didn't if, they, if hypothetically they are the same, which I, I don't know, right? Um, they can easily set up the rules themselves. They used to do it all the time. Like just make the rules, CDL rule set. And then like, obviously all those guns and all those attachments and stuff like that are available to try. I don't know why they do it. They don't do it. Um, a Wait, lot of that, can you not some of unlock CDL rules? I mean, you could just make the rules. Like literally, no, I know, know but, the rules but and make I, them. What, what game the was it that you could you like could, apply, I, yeah, sure you could ghost, apply you could. CDL rules and hit like square and just unlock? I don't know them, if you could, you could do that edit. anymore. It was yeah, a recent. That, that was a recent thing. thing. Silly. Uh, I don't remember. I don't know if the tech is there anymore, Pat. To to hit square and hit unlock rules. Technology just ain't there. I don't know about tech. Yeah, this is this is a very weird. This, this is a weird one because I, I again I kind of understand the, the reason why we're getting in this issue, but this is one on the publisher side. They've got to open up more options for themselves. Yeah, JP's in games. chat. He said that you need to start from scratch, but we used to do it exactly. So some of it, yeah. Listen, it'd be ideal if the the devs could have stuff like that where they can lock the rules. But like there are ways that you can test stuff. It's more so if people are willing to do it. Um, and clearly most of the time they're not. Tommy also just brought up a graph of the striker. And the MCW, yeah, the striker is not as good as the rival. Um, so that could have also been an option. The only problem with the striker, and it's why I think a lot of the people GA'd it in challengers already, is the striker's headshot multiplier is basically like the MCW's at a point where you ba if you hit a headshot, you blow somebody away. So that's yeah. why that gun got GA'd in challengers. I don't really know what the pro situation is like or if they've even tried the striker nine at I think all. They but already. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, there. Regardless, though, there are solutions out there to alleviate um, some of the AR AR uh, players' problems and not ruin the experience for subs without nerfing their current weapon meta. Um, but I don't really know if people even care to do it. I personally just I hate it. I hate the system. I hate how um, unmotivating some of these uh, players are when it comes to changing it, and it's just very frustrating. So yeah. a couple, a couple. Hold on, hold on. I want to get to Sam. What did you think about yeah, the, the like the GA system? Because I. I 
I feel like getting everybody in the call is that is that impossible, Sam? Like, is that fucking? I tough? mean, it's just, bro. Players are just fucking lazy, dude. Like, if they like Austin and, and Tom, you guys remember those like mandatory town halls we would have with like Spencer and all yeah, those guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like it's almost it almost needs to be league regulated to like if if I don't think it's ever going to be out of the players' hands. I actually think it needs to become a point where the system that they have needs to be handheld and babysat step by step to where like. Spencer will literally schedule a call to like get a GA conversation going. Not right. that it's like out of the player's hands, but it needs to be literally handheld step by step. Like, all right, here's our monthly call. What do we think? What needs to be revisited? This, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Like, that's actually how I think this should go. Yeah. It, it's some, well, there needs to be somebody else here who's kind of keeping that, that show yeah. going. Like it's, and like like it's on the players, together. but it's still like being regulated in a way where it's like, done properly right yeah D done above board i think two other changes that came through a uh, one quick one is the swarm got ga'd i think we talked that about that insane. on on a i saw, that gun's I saw, like that that gun's I saw matt using yeah. that shit today in uh ranked he was going crazy with it that gun's I, don't, unbelievable. I don't think anyone wants to see hydra simper or bz run that in a real match i think they would fry and then the second one and sam i know you had a lot of thoughts on this one was the ordinance glove ga what are your thoughts on that bro i can't believe that shit's going i understand the argument of it's it's cheese i don't want to die in my spawn bro i like the people saying that i don't want to die in my spawn are under the assumption that if the other team has ordinance gloves on you are instantly going to get not only single nated if you're running eod you're going to get double nated every single round in your spawn every round if the other team is running ordinance nades like they're not going to throw them every every time you have to learn how to throw them in a match I know how motherfuckers throw nades in the league. They're not hitting them every round regardless. <laughs> not good. Like, not good. Dude, even, if, even if they did throw oh them, that means God, they're down bro. two nades. Right. Exactly. You, you have no so tacticals for a rip. retake. People are calling for the, the Caesar nade on Karachi for the offense. Everyone is freaking out that you can't go coop. If you run to the left and throw a frag over the building on offense, you can kill the guy pushing the street on defense. Like, there's a yeah. nade for both sides is, in that specific instance. Is there not a instance. I, I like know there, there, uh, there is there, there so is not no. that was the thing I, that, I was gonna that's, say. That's the easy like, fix though. Oh my god, like, we had a lethal we had delay, yeah, a lethal for like three, delay like three seconds for like twenty nine yeah. years. No bullshit. Like I don't understand why that one doesn't exist. But even if it doesn't exist to, by default, that's been a private match setting for so long. Like yeah, yeah having a lethal Dude, delay. Yeah, yeah. Like I, just I, add that. Add that in. We no, not, not But I I despise I despise the GA. Despise it. And I was gonna say I don't I don't think they should add a lethal delay. I think that the way pros are looking at it is assuming that every single team has these ordnance nades and knows how to throw them and they have just a ton of them to cut off the map, right? When in reality, there's probably one team, uh, maybe two, that are well prepared enough to have a lot of these lineup spots. And I think more so people aren't people aren't GAing it because they don't want to be cheesed out of like these spots. The they're they don't they're learn GAing it. it because they don't want to go through the fucking process of learning it themselves. I promise I didn't you. think they don't want to learn it. I think they just don't want to deal with it. I think no, I actually think they don't. No, I think they don't want to learn it, bro. I actually no, think they want to they spawn up with, and shoot their guns. That's what I think they, they want to do. Spawn up, they, they don't want to spawn up. They don't want to deal with it being a thing. Yes. They just want to sprint to their spot and get in the gunfight. That's the CDO error. That is the CDO error. But I also want to talk about it too because I feel like a lot of times Ghost is being brought up in this, and I feel like it's not a good comparison. Yeah, I made that comparison on Twitter the other day. There was an explosive delay, and. Strong arm was only used for stuns in that game. It was literally stunning crosses, like on Warhawk. Yeah, you stun the cross. Did you not I nade that mail cracks. cross on Warhawk? Am I misremembering? No, that? You, no, you, you didn't could. get naded. You didn't you get naded. Also, doing. You could also nade on. You uh, could, but it was hard. On the cross. You could do. It you can hit the nade. No, you can nade one of the cross. You could nade it. You it could, was you just could, a, like like if um. I used to do this. I would throw the strong arm stun on the octane cross, and TP would throw the nade. Like when you're crossing back strip to uh. Was it a site on our yeah across the yeah, yeah across like the tank. if we're on defense I would strong arm stun the the strip yeah, cross and then you could, would nade it you could frag it or nade it without strong arm you only needed the strong arm for the stun guy to land it quick enough I was gonna say that also one thing uh, that would I, happen I, we did is it with frags too because we yeah. from that back because then you beat him to, to the docks yeah. right and you beat with him the, to the docks yeah, and you hit him from the back ladder building yeah so with explosive delay the nades weren't like they didn't not hurt you like with explosive delay the nades were weaker. And that, no, they did hurt delay. you still, yeah. Yeah, they still hurt yeah. you. So, like, even then, nading it and stunning it was still useful because useful you would hurt them, tag them, and then also just, like, slow them down. So. I think a lot of the problems, though, is in the CODs now. There's, like, well, especially on Karachi, Invasion, 
I know there's a few nades. There's a lot of explosive cars in the spawn, and you could literally have one person throw a frag and get a Is, kill. Isn't the explosive delay in these CODs now, like, you don't even... It doesn't even allow you to throw your tacks. Like, it's not even that you throw them and they do nothing. It's I don't even you think there... Is there there's there's, a, there's one in, in this game. I'm, yeah, I, I don't think there I, is. I have, unless it's a Mandela it, it, effect, there is absolutely no, there is. one in the game. There is, yeah, because we had it. It was an S&D tournament at the beginning effect, of the year. Right? Then what's the issue? Wait, are you saying it is in the game and, like, we're using it or we're not using it? No, no, there is no, there isn't one, but there was a setting in the game, is what I'm oh, saying. Oh, oh, yeah. you're saying okay, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, but I don't even like the setting in the game now just doesn't allow you to throw your shit. Like in the other games, you could throw it and like still use it, but not like hurt them. With or, this like, one, I'm less. honestly like kind of conflicted because I do enjoy like Ghost was the best SD game by far, in my opinion, and I did enjoy the stuff that went into that with strong arm stunning, um, all the smokes, like everything yeah. like that. But I feel like the way it plays out now, also like when you did run strong arm in that game, I'm pretty sure you lost something like a perk, like you couldn't run incog or so like something. Dexterity nah, or nah, something. Strong arm, strong arm was a it one was a point. one. Point it was only so. one point, but yeah. I still don't think you could like because you had to run focus, you had to run dead silence, and you had to run like obviously your gun and tack. Like so I don't think you could too. incog. No, nah, you points. could stack, bro. I had a strong arm class that had like seven perks. Like it just you couldn't have. Well, incog but you yet, still but... you still lost something, is what I'm saying. Whereas in this game you don't. You, you would. Lose, I mean, you like, lose, you can lose like marksman and quick draw in this game. But marksman, I don't even think marksman's really like. It's not like you're losing dead silence or like focus Marks, or like. Yeah, Marcus not the same severity, focus. but you're still losing something. Focus. The downside and, to strong arm and ghost was that your fuse time, if you were holding the grenade, was faster. I, like, I, I don't even care if you lose anything. I personally just am in the like I'm in the 100 percent camp that like yeah, some people might feel like they um like they would be cheesed out of like certain rounds and stuff like that. Like for the example, the Karachi nade. But I think the more so the reason it's getting GA'd is the unknown, bro. Like, no one wants to spawn in on a fucking S&D at a major tournament and get fucking naded across the map by something they'd never seen before. And there's probably so bro, many of them. Bro, then fucking figure it out for oh, yourself know, so it I doesn't know, happen. Like, no one, no one in Counter-Strike wanted to get killed by a four-man boost. Dude, so nah, I hate, I hate yeah, that yeah, shit okay, because well, that, people, that, people, people coming up with talk cool about shit is like dude. part of the game. People like talk yeah. about like throwing nades and lineups and how they're calling it cheese, but Counter Strike is the best FPS esport on the fucking planet, and all they do is line up nades. Like that is the 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 entire thing on how you yeah. set up a round in Counter Strike is lining shit up, and people are gonna I call think, it cringe. Yeah, I think it makes things fucking interesting, miss your bro. Nades, like, bro, but, uh, again, listen. it's the CDL era, bro. Like yeah. we're playing with like, listen, I'll, I'll I'll stand by this, man. We're in post COVID, bro. I, I, we're in like the brain rot era, like. The attention <laughs> span of people has like drastically changed, <laughs> and I fully say every CDL, not every, there's spawn there's up, some, go forward, shoot gun. Yeah, bro, it's a, it's just in a different attention span. Everyone just wants to run around for ten minutes, shoot their gun, and then check the result at the end. Bro. Right. Like that's it. Uh, well, I'm getting brain rot. Let's the rest of this. So let's uh, move on. I think that was a good conversation about the weapon, J. Uh, Tom, we're gonna lock in. We do this before every uh, online split. We go ahead and we rank the teams. There's still some roster stuff. You actually want to do the tier list? You actually want to do it? Yeah, we should, we we've done it before. We made your qualifier. Why wouldn't we do it? All right, let's do a tier list. Let's run this so, shit. I so thought we were gonna do are... predictions. I'm down for a tier list. No, nah, no, nah, we, we can kind of we can move through it quick. It. It'll be yeah, pretty we'll quick. Do, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do yeah, quick. we can do, we can run through it. I like to see you in the DM. For yeah, in the DM. All right, phenomenal. Thank you, Benjay. Yeah, but uh, so tier we list. Just, we just before we qualify and chat. There is some roster news that has been announced, but some stuff is not public yet. But pretty much. I think all of the changes are either have been confirmed or basically have been leaked. So we'll discuss them. Wait, um, who's joining Rocker? We'll get to that when we talk about their team. We're going to go yeah, through. Well, I need, to, I need to know now, now so I can. can I, I, will, I will say the team name and then I'll explain the changes and then you can react. To oh, no, say please it. don't explain. It takes forever to explain. <laughs> <So> this tier <laughs> list is going to be so. <laughs> This this tier list is going to be so funny because we're going to compare like we're going to be like oh this team belongs in here they just place top six like this yeah, team belongs in here they just place last like what so this tier list can't wait is to make this standings terrible. list this is going to be fire that's that's what <laughs> the I, standings list that's the only reason why I wasn't feeling it because it's like are we just going to be going off standings it's just like I feel like if we're going off major two it's going to look a lot like the standings. I think there's going to be not, a maybe bit not of necessarily, but we'll we'll check it out. There's, there's uh, some, first there's and foremost, I, I, got, I, got, I got S, S to D four. right now. I got S to D right now. You guys okay so, with that? Well, yeah. Sure. So let's let's speed this up. Do we all agree? Optic and Phase and S tier. No. Yeah. No. Okay, Sam. I was gonna have Phase uh, S, you... and then I was gonna have Optic lead A. Okay. Uh, do you agree with that, Pat? Uh, Sam and uh, uh, Pat. Yes. What do you think? 
I yeah, agree with Tom. I'm fine with S and A. Yeah. So based on that, where would we want to place New York and Toronto? I would put. I mean, as well. I mean, bro, Toronto's our major one champion. I would put Toronto maybe an S. Yeah, and and I think they just got better off all these changes. I I. I'm going off the thing that Pat just said. I feel like they're quick learners, and they're I feel like the maps. Auto veto is going. I, and, I assume that they're uh, going to be bad. I don't know if I'm putting them in S personally. I'm not putting them in S. But, but, but what, are what, what are we going off of? I don't know if we can really put I'm going off of major one and major two. Their last performance. Then the last performances. Then A. Then A. Year to date. Why not go year to date? Like we got to look at. I mean year to date. That's how that's how I'm looking at it, Pat. So what's our what's 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 then what's the salvage criteria the front? Envoy had a a terrible terrible event. And Insight played pretty bad. I don't think that they're going to play that bad again. Now, like, the whole stage, they looked a little off, in my opinion, bro. I thought we were uh, guessing, yeah, like, what they're going to be in the next stage. That's what I thought we were doing, I, th too. I think we're about... So we need, okay, we, we need to clear this. define what we we're doing here. We need to define the criteria here. You're are we going the, off what we think they're going to do in Major 3 or where they are currently with two majors? I think it should be where they are currently after two majors going into Stage 3, where we okay, have them then, ranked. Okay. I mean, said both. Then you put them in A, Thomas said both. And you put them in A. <laughs> okay, Toronto's in A. Wait, what do you mean? Wait, did I, did I have them leading A then? I have them New York's leading A. In a. Yeah, in I, think, I think Optic's in front of them. No, like, Optic's in front of them. What? Yeah. Are you? We, we just said Optic's getting worse. Toronto's getting better. Yeah, but it's based off the current... It's based off like more majors. second and lost to one team. Okay, listen. So this is how we're gonna do it because yeah, everybody in the chat's ran. flipping out. So this yeah, is how we're gonna do it. Yeah, the team in fucking S, but they didn't lose. Yeah, the they and, beat and, Toronto and, twice. And guess what? The team in S. Twice? Man, these last the minute tier list, man. They really their pockets <laughs> ran by Bro, Ultra. It's the same beat thing. Beat Toronto and New York twice this split and didn't lose. And to right. Toronto beat Phase. You're just going major two. All Listen, right, guys, this on. is what it's we're gonna do. To this list. is what we're gonna do, bro. I love tier lists. Because there was roster changes and stuff, we're gonna we're gonna <coughs> rank them based on how we think they're going to do in stage. Okay. Three. So we'll oh, do okay. it like that. Yes. Okay, yeah. that's better. I put sure. Toronto. I, then I, then I, I'm, I'm down for Toronto, Toronto and S. You want to put Toronto and S? I'm okay. down for Toronto and S as well. All right, phenomenal. Toronto's in okay. S. Atlanta phase in S. You uh, optic top of A. I'm keeping and in them what, in New York right behind they them? they lost some maps. This is the one, the yeah, one, thing, I'll right say, the one thing I'll say about Toronto is I'm very curious on what happens with the S&D map pool because that'll be a big determining factor for Toronto. Their big problem in Split 2 was Search. I That's think they're my, getting better they're from the map pool, though. Yeah, I think so, too. But we got to see it a hard point. But their S&D was not great this Split. And they ended up with a losing record in it by the end of the stage. So I want to see them fine. come back. It's why I'm I mean, I'm always going to have faith in Toronto. Really I'm, yeah, I'm more I, worried about their search. I think they'll, I'll figure it out. But if their search is really struggling at the beginning they, of the Split. They, 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 they're throwing that's tomatoes. That's the tier list. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 They're not even so, happy with that, though. They're throwing key. tomatoes. They're, 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 they're getting mad. They're getting mad in the chat. Bro, the two event winners are an S. Uh, and Optic in New York or in A. How is that fucking insane? How is that a bad take at all? I mean, I'm, I'm, looking, off, of I'm looking off Turtle's season performance rating, his little custom SPR he made. And we're, so far, we're looking good. Phase is one, Honestly, Ultra's two, Optic's makes, three, and Subliners it four. It makes sense that we do this off of like how we predict teams because otherwise, this tier list is going to get funky because I know for a fact that none of you guys have LAG doing well to split. But they place top six, so doing it off the event would just be stupid because then we would just be like, well, they place top six, everyone else got last. If we don't put them ahead of everybody else, then we would just look stupid. So we should definitely do it off our predictions of so this. Of this so yeah, that's what we're doing. That's why I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm rationaling it with chat. I want to get to the bomb this, this optic yeah. Toronto thing. And let's do so like, LG last. So why do, why do we think then, obviously, phase in Toronto major winners, I see the argument. But optic obviously beat Toronto twice during the split. Why wouldn't we then? Put Optic and S because the only team they've lost. Because we're not making phase. a major two tier list. But do you think that Optic is going to get worse during this? this I mean, in theory, yes, in I theory, we can all agree Toronto in, underperformed last time. In theory, but why, why, why would that affect why, wait, why performance? Do you, that's why. That's why I'm confused here. Why are pool, we? Map pool. Their map pool is getting worse. Toronto's is getting better. Okay, no, Toronto no, 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 is no, no, not no. going to play as bad as they're they not, did in stage one. It's not getting worse. There's no way that we can say that they're for sure not going to be good at those maps. They are losing maps that they are 100 percent good at. While Toronto is losing maps that they're bad at, so like they don't have to worry about them in a veto scenario. Like we can't say that for sure, but this is a positive change for Toronto, and it's a complete new. I, I mean, we can't say anything for, for sure. We're predicting yeah, something. That's the whole point. Obviously, that's what I'm just saying. Like it's a it's a positive thing that Toronto is losing out their losing their auto vetoes, and it's a bad thing that Optic is losing some maps that they're good at. They're gonna have to figure out more than Toronto will. When Toronto's uh, uh, just getting a clean slate. 
We can let this slide, but I, I don't know if I really I mean, bro, you, you're right. just I mean, going off recency fine. bias, though. Wait, like, so would you, you put Toronto at an Optic and S, Ben? Ben, if you look at it holistically, you would say the opposite. You would say Toronto ran Optic in, in Stage 1. Like, they were a much better team bro. overall. It's the same Optic, conversation. Bro, I just looked this up. Optic has lost... <laughs> They've lost seven times this year. Once was to New York, the first fucking match of the season. <laughs> well, they okay. had a flawless stage. No shit, they fucking they lost. lost fucking bro, yeah, stop. Bro, who cares about I'm online? I'm talking about events. Stop talking the about only, online. Bro, the only team they've lost to at events, and they played all the other top four teams at events in, in the first two events. The only team they lost to its face. Yeah, they got their, they got, and they've got their shit, yeah, man, every I, time. I, you I know who's beat face? You Toronto you Ultra. That. I didn't beat him this split, so I don't know. I exactly. That's why I it's a year to date overall. Me, I, 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 I could, I could see Optic whatever. being an S with them. It, it's a predictive. It's a predictive tier list, bro. It's just how we're nah, ranking these teams, how we think they're gonna I'm, do. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. We're what if it was? Hot. What if it was like this? What if it was like this? You think that looks worse or better? That looks horrible. All right. What about like this? What about like that? Because I don't think that looks that bad. No. Uh, then it doesn't even make sense. You don't think so? <laughs> I think the way we I think the way we're looking at this this uh, split is more so like how we predict the events going to go at the end of the split. Like how do we? I don't think like, New York if is we, that much if we worse. Had to predict, like, if we had to predict the two teams going into the finals of the of the next major, like I right now with Toronto. what we have, I, I, then we would I, say this, right? I would say that Optic has always had a chance. I actually personally. When you think about Invasion and Skid Row Hardpoint, I thought New York played really good Invasion, especially at the end of the split. And they've always been one of the better Skid Row teams. And so of any of the top four teams, first Hardpoint map pool, they're the one I'm most concerned about. I think they'll figure it out, but amongst the top four teams, Six Star and Vista, if maybe I mean, one of those You can make the same pool, case for Optic. Optic is yeah. really good Invasion and Skid Row as well. Skid Row both of them are going. Exactly. And both of them and are in a. I, I just have more confidence, I think, in the sub players on Optic to figure those maps out than I do on, on land, New York. On land you do? Yeah, yeah. So they just oh, got second. They, they beat New York. Phase. Phase they beat New York. They beat Toronto. Like they're yeah. But let's move on. Like, let's well, online. I could see that. Point. We, we should move on. We gave our thoughts on the top we can, four. We can move on. We can move on. We should move on to to uh, the let's B tier now. Let's do one of the teams now. that made changes. Let's do a team that made changes. Boston. Uh, yeah, we could do Boston. <laughs> yeah, we could we could do Boston. Come out. I don't know Boston. Real quick, just so I'm sure, who they pick up? They picked the beans and pentagram. Beans and pentagram for Asim and Slasher. So it's beans, pentagram. Oh, Pat, we never really got in your thoughts on the uh, whole Boston situation. What do you think about the roster changes? And, I, like, I, what joined, do you think about the... I joined your stream one week when this was like being discussed. I thought you were trolling when you said beans at first. When I first heard you say that, you thought I was trolling? No, no, no. I was being uh, for real. I think. Yeah, uh, I thought you were trolling. When, when, but that's why. I, that's originally I thought beans was just a massive troll. Like. I Dude. understood Pentagram. Pentagram made sense. He's been a sub for eight years. Like that one. Give him a okay. Shot. Yeah. Beans was insane. Um. So yeah, for me, I'm going D. Tom. They just got dead last. <laughs> yeah, Do you fuck? think they just got dead like, last? Why? Do you think that these changes are moving the needle? Yeah. Right. Right. That, that's what no. I was gonna say. It, the, it, I think they solved it zero it problems. It really can't get any worse, though. It can't get any worse. Yeah, no, but it yeah. can stay the same, which is just as yeah, bad. I, D. I think they yeah. stay the same. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I mean, I mean, which is just I mean, as bad. It, it can't. It can't get worse because at least they were decent at times on hardpoint split, and while the S and the control were bad, I mean, the hardpoint can get bad, and then we're. Worse and worse. So I agree for Boston for now. Could get worse. So yeah. it's team play. I, I think. I think D they do have an it. easier split coming up though. They do, to and be that's fair. what I was about to say. Their split coming up during the third stage is Miami, Minnesota, LAG, Optic, Thieves, Toronto, and Vegas. So do we want to look at it for is a it split weird perspective? That I'm still, no. If they can't put it together well, now, I'm, then, I'm still seeing. Yeah. It. Dude, I still think they finished negative in this split. Like. Even then, I still think I, I don't think I, they place outside the even, bottom four. Even at the naming end. all those I teams you just named, named. <laughs> I still yeah. hear three and four, or two and five. Like I, I think regardless games. of their online schedule, bro, I have zero faith With in that them schedule. That would be insane. Event. Yeah, I, I think I think these are a good spot for them. We we can do a team that's also making a change. We mentioned their name, the Minnesota Rocker. <laughs> uh, I don't think anything has yep. been confirmed just Nothing yet confirmed, about this, but. I'm but a little confused it, with this roster, Ben. Yeah, so let me explain the changes, and then we'll kick it to the group here to discuss. So it looks like there are going to be two changes. Reese Vivid will be rotating out for Eli Standy. Interesting one. There's a Standy Lynn sub duo. And then they tried out Indoor on this roster. It didn't work out. Uh, that was interesting. replace Big Wake. And it looks like, and a player we've talked about a lot should be in the league. He's now getting his chance again. Gunless, a.k.a. Big P, is going to be pairing off in the ARs with Lamar. So Can't what do you think about that. accuracy, Gunless, 
Standy and Lynn. Is well, this I'll is start the things off. Slowest roster of all yeah, time. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll start things off. I'll say first with the with the big Wake change. I think there was definitely something going on with Wake. Like I, he definitely wasn't getting kills, so he was having a hard time. And I think you need your flex player to come in and be able to facilitate the map and get kills. Um, so I think with Gunless coming in I, for Big Wake, I think that was a good a good swap there. I feel like you can't really complain there. And we have been pretty vocal about Gunless and and how he's been playing in challengers and how he's performed in the past in the, in the league. So uh, I'm happy that that Big P's getting another opportunity, especially because he got kicked out for being really sick where he couldn't play uh, and he was in the hospital and stuff. So that's kind of like how his journey ended. And I'm excited for him to get that journey started back up again and to, to try and make a run here. And, and That's when he, he got does. kicked out of the CDO? I thought that happened. Yeah, it was CW. LG and Vanguard. Nah, CDO. He had stomach ulcers. He was in the Boston hospital. Boston kicked him off the team. Yeah. And, uh, I did. Time it was all me. And then Spark <laughs> ran an MVP season. MVP now, the, the change for Vivid to Standy confuses me a little bit because I feel like if that dynamic duo between... Standy and Linz is going to be a little weird just off play style alone. Um, and I think Vivid was kind of the guy who like took the routes and pushed pace for these guys. Like Sam said, before we got into it, it's it, it, the team on paper just looks so slow. Just on paper. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to, to keep up with that pace. I, I've always been that person that thinks faster is better. Like, if you can all get on the same page and make decisions quicker, you're just always going to be a step ahead of the other team. And you're always going to be just in that right spot. You're going to get that map control. Like, you're just going to control the map. So I, I I feel like losing that pace up top might hurt them a little bit. I think Standy's a good player. I just don't know if the duo of him and Linz is the right two. I don't, I don't how, know if that's the right well, question. I, I, what is your question? I, how, ahead, did he, go, how did he back. even get on this team? Like, I'm not even Yours? saying that in like, no, Standy. Not oh. even like a roast way or I disagree with it way. Like, does, does Standy not surprise you guys? Like, I feel like he doesn't really have a relationship with any of these guys. Did he even play in Challengers when he got dropped? He may have. I don't know. Yeah, he did. No, he played. Bit. He played. He's got a relationship with Rocker. He won with that team. Yeah. No, Rocker. Yeah, four. but that was a completely different. T like, the, no one was there, were they? Well, Dan he knows the was camp. there now. Uh, Looney wasn't there. I don't think Looney yeah. was there yet. No, Dan was there in Vanguard. In Cold War? I think Cold War. In the Cold War when they won. I mean, either well, way, bro. In Cold War when they won, I don't think he was there, but he was definitely there in Vanguard. He uh, was. Just last year there. Regardless of, uh, you know, the dynamic and stuff like that, I still think Standy's a good player, and he has performed well on LAN, and he puts up, like, pretty decent stats when he does play in the league. Um, I think regardless of the changes, I think it's still a net positive for this team. Um, regardless if that dynamic duo is a little bit weird to us, maybe they end up meshing well, but the gunless upgrade was like a no, a no brainer. If gunless plays to his potential and plays anywhere near how good he used to be, um, pre his, uh, stomach ulcers and all that stuff. I think this team will at the very least not place last. So uh, I think, I think C is, <laughs> is fine. Well, but let me ask you guys this What's question. What's been like in challengers outside that last event? I mean, he's... he's a Prior, he's been good, bro. He's been the good. Last, eh, the last couple of like in MW two, he played in challengers, and I think he's he didn't have good. he didn't have a lot of good land results, but he did play well online. And then this year, um, he's been able to put it together in both. So he's been good. At least I don't this know. Year, people are sure. saying stop lying in me, but I feel like people will look at stats. Like I, I uh, feel like when, Pierce Pierce's been solid in in the you can just tell he's a good player when you want to play. Like, he just knows play. what's going on. Here's my question as to why this go team goes in C and D. I think uh, Carolina and LAG got top six at this last event. I think a strat that's probably going to potentially prevail the rest of this this uh, year, which is among the the bottom eight teams, if you assume that everybody's just going to kind of cancel each other out, it comes down to game five, and who's the better s d squad. Do you think that Rocker's horrible performance in stage two, this team would be a better search team than what they had before? I mean, like, this goes back to the they can't get worse. I mean, they dropped, the, they dropped what, the statistically one of, if not the worst search players in the league, no? In Wake, yeah, uh, Wake Wake was not having a great. I mean, he was player, statistically the worst. I mean, the worst. Just, they just, won, as a whole. Across all categories, they won five S and Ds. They can win fucking zero next fight. You know what I'm saying? Like there is always worse here. Uh, do you? But do you think they improve in that game mode? Do you think they're about the same? I think Sandy's a good search player. I think Sandy is a good search player, but so Pierce, is Reese. Though. And Pierce is yeah, but Pierce is and Pierce is reliable, like in search, and he will. He's not brain dead, so I think. This team, I think this team's improves. I think I'm team cautiously improves. optimistic There's... about this roster. The standy, I, yeah. I agree with Chris's overall sentiment on the team. I think it is a net positive because Wake is going. Sorry, Wake. 
Um, I think if Pierce literally goes even, I think that this team could be playing better than they were previously. Um, the 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 sub duo was just a weird dynamic. To we'll just have to see how it pans out, especially right. with Rio Vista and Six Star. Yeah, I, I don't mind playing them in C and Karachi SND. I just looked it up. Was the one map that really kind of tanked their SND over record? They were over four in the maps. We'll see if they improve with the squad. But any issues? Anyone else in C before we move on? I'm fine with that. Let's move on. But let's talk about a team that is not making a change, even though we've talked about maybe they should make a change. The Vegas Legion, they are sticking around. You guys feel like they're maybe in that B spot? Do we want to put a little bit of a gap? Like, what do you guys think there? I no. still like this Vegas they're, team. They're dude. fucking up, not making a change. I yeah. will say it now. I mean, I, and in in three months when the season is done, we can re, we can revisit this. But I think they are seriously dropping the ball, not making a roster change here. And you're saying we could change the purge is what you're saying. It's yeah, a absolutely. Bunch. Like, look, man. I, I think I, Geo has the been kid, great. The kid's obviously a good kid. Like, I heard him in his interviews. Nothing wrong with him. But, like, when we're talking about building a team that's trying to get better event after event, like, it's it's clear that he is the worst player on the squad, no matter what intangibles he's bringing. Um, we've talked about this before. That, like, role doesn't exist anymore. It can't exist with how the talent is is on like how the talent shapes up on these rosters like you can't just have a guy who has all these intangibles who's getting shit on like you just can't and yes he made improvements the role change helped him but like they need somebody who's getting kills it's just as simple as that um ah. and it, we talked about this the stage two to stage three roster change period is the most important every year and it's even more important this year because there's 11 straight weeks of call of duty with two events and they're not upgrading is insane to me. It's insane to me. I want to agree with you. Um, but at the same time, the reason like it's just hard to like even like justify it right now because I feel like they did play well, at least in the online split. And granted, Purge didn't have a great series against one of the top four teams. He played really good against the bottom team that they ended up losing to and getting knocked out. So it's kind of just an unfortunate situation because you would be dropping a player that um, essentially was helping you even be competitive in the series that you ended up getting knocked out of the tournament. Um, yeah, I think there probably are some upgrade paths there, but they really seem to believe in in, in purge, and um, I still think this team is going Boston to do well. Boston believes in Snoopy, and we hate, yeah, yeah. We hate <laughs> on them for doing that. Like, what's I'm confused. Well, I yeah, mean, but, to be but, fair, but, purge has actually but, gotten better since yeah, uh, since the start improved. of the game. So, and I think Vegas is going to have a similar stage. I don't really know what their split is like, um, Ben. You would probably know, um, but assuming it's uh, not the fucking end of the world top four team every single game. Um, I still think these guys will be a good team. So their split, I actually think, is interesting. LAG and Thieves, they played two LAG teams off the rip. Then they have Optic, Seattle, FaZe, and New York, and Boston. So I see three wins there, but I also see three losses, and I see two tricky series. And I think they're tricky to me because this is the one thing with Vegas. I don't mind playing them in B, but... We do have to talk about how they've lost six of their last seven SNDs, especially at the event. It's very poor in the SND game mode. Again, curious to what <laughs> SND map pool changes we get, but they continue that struggle and search. It's going to be really hard to consistently win like three weeks. I mean, bro, do you series. see the plays they make? Like, it's, it's, it, oh, it's yeah, always going to be like that. It, like, we've talked about this. The personnel yeah, on your team event. matters. Like, they have people that just play a certain way. It's not changing any time. It's not changing this year. It didn't change last year. It won't change next year. Like, there's just certain players that know. play a certain I, way. Attach always gets his piece of the pie, man. He might. Yeah, Attach isn't the one making those fucking plays. Yeah. Like, but I, but I, I, feel, I feel like they, they have, like, a good... If if there's only one player looking at, which is Purge, I mean, I feel like Purge... And Nero. Nero plays like a moron in S&D. Like, he, that's... It's just, you live and die by it. Like, he's if he's on, he'll get you 11, but... But round eleven, he could just run out and die for nothing. Like, you want to yeah. hear crazy? I, 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 round I think or? comparing them up to the rest of the the bottom eight, I I feel like they match up pretty well when you so, when so you this match kind them of, up against kind the rest of a wild of stat. What do you guys think their round eleven stat is this year? Got to be terrible they, because they cannot win around eleven. I, I don't think they've won any. Yeah, they're zero and six. I didn't even realize that they're zero and six in round eleven this season. Is zero fucking they, ice. They got they got to improve the ice in search again. They're reach. We, oh. we talk about the respawn. You don't improve we, ice. Like I'm sorry. Either got it or you don't. Yeah. yeah, you got it or you don't, bro. Well, if they're not making a roster change, they got to figure out how to improve it because a respawn with them, against especially bottom uh, eight teams, they look like conceptually they know how they want to play and they play well as a squad, even though some of their better maps, like Invasion Hardpoint, are kind of in Skid Row, might be out of here. Now there were five in one of those maps last split. They need to find some form on a Rio, a Vista, or a six-star, but 
the SD is a problem. They could fall off hard if you look at this uh, stage for them if their SD is really struggling. But we should move on. I don't think there's any issues. Yeah. I, 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 I want to bring days. up the I want to bring up the next team because I'm ready to start fighting people. Oh, yeah. Let's All talk right. about let's talk about the let's talk about LAG. Uh, uh, D done. Next team. You think you think they're a D tier team when they got top six two events in a row? Oh yes. Who'd they play? Like they beat the teams you're putting ahead of them. They beat teams that you're gonna you might put ahead of them rather. Congrats. So where would you they're have Chris C tier? They were Owen. They were. They should have went Owen I, seven. Like I personally, they won three in a row. I can. can I, I, I personally can pretend. I I would potentially put them in B, and you hear me out. Why? They are legitimately a top B? three. Search. B. Yeah. B? They, just, they, they were going Owen seven. I don't care. If they didn't troll. They look like the care. worst team I've ever B. seen in my life. I don't care. They went to the event. They got top six, and they are top so three. Of, they got top three S and D team. Event. They're a top but, three S and D team in the game at least but, but right here's now. A, here's bro, a name we gotta we gotta oh, stop. No, no, we have to stop doing this, bro. Because this is actually pathetic. It's fine. I'm so tired of hearing teams got top six at an event, and then we look at who they played, and they I mean, somehow got a bracket against... where they played the 12th team and the 11th team to get top six. Like, I mean, they I mean beat, to be fair, top six is so Pat, irrelevant, Pat, Pat, to be fair, to top six is the ceiling for eight teams in the league. Yeah, they no, beat, I know. Wait, they beat Vegas, that, the team you're putting no, ahead but of them. Again, that doesn't mean that they're top six just because they got top six. That's my point, they bro. We've talked about now. this. Uh, and, I'll, and hold on real bro, quick. Carolina got top six. They're not top six. Like, it's the same thing thing man hold, bracket hold, bracket cheese is a real thing so if they go to another major so if they go to another major and they play Chris. top six again you're going to keep putting them at yes D. they're not top six bro okay. like uh, if they beat, ahead, they beat the go 12th ahead, best team and the 11th bro. best team they did it. Top they beat, six, they beat, i don't care let ben go let ben go real quick chris let him go go ahead ben might as well be bro i want to just want to debate it i want to debate it that's why i'm like i want to just chat real quick here because I don't think that Chris is entirely off base with his SMG comment. I do think that LAG search was very good. Clay's in the chat. I thought Carolina search was Got very better. good. It's hard to rank bottom eight teams and the top four teams as far as SMD goes. Uh, but I do think that LAG search was really, really good the last couple of weeks of the split. Now, are they going to carry that on to the next stage? We'll see because that strong performance in snd they were not that great in respawn when he took them off of you know maps like sub base they really struggled on karachi they were not a great rio team the respawns are tough but they got this top six, six placing off of Grand i like them top of c searches. that's where i like that's i like it. lag bro, top of c I'm, I'm getting top six bro. at an event where you're playing the two worst teams to get your top six is not a real top six well, that's a problem they like, i'm sorry event format, you're, in a, like, you're in a you're granted, in a one and done loser bracket run granted like, you, you they win two uh, matches against two teams that are also horrible that doesn't make they, you a top six granted team. they went zero and six in this last stage or not went zero and six what was it one and six or something what, what is it one, one and six. six yeah they also had one of the hardest splits yeah they had winnable matches in there no excuse for that they had one of the hardest splits um out of some of the teams and i think they're going into one of their easier splits the reason i'm putting them even at the top of c and i was even just i was honestly just having the conversation for b just to like spark a debate here because s and map pool as we know has not changed at all so they're gonna keep their strengths um at least going into the split and then they're going to get a little reset in the respawn map pool um to try to kind of like relearn and maybe upset teams so bro, like bro bro they have, they have, they have look, look at carolina's run look at carolina's Stop. run last event bro, they, they had a, they had a round one okay. buy Man, and then they beat talk. and then they beat legion 3-2 in a round 11 that they probably should have lost like, are you guys saying that that's a qualifying for a top six team? Bro, it's just how this I mean, at the end of the day, the majors, like, are, the majors no, are yeah, so that, That's why we're like, not judging off the fucking event placings. We're talking about how we bro, think a team will do. What do you do. want to judge off of? I'm not going to How fucking, we predict wait, a team will do. We broke this down 17 want? times before the bro. tier list. We said, I mean, how do we think a team bro, is going to do? I mean, do? The thing is, though, are we just Hold it, hold it, hold it. We said it. We literally agreed. So we know the ceiling for, like, all these teams outside. Uh, top four their ceiling is five through six right like for the yes. most part unless they have an upset right if let's say leg for example let's just let's just move forward they go to another event top six are we ever going to stop basically just being like they're not top 16 they're not top 16 they're consistently placing that a major bro regardless of Chris, their online standings you can go, we just not you like oh and seven and i'm not even saying this for no, them. No, no, it could be raven me. same conversation yeah, for them yeah, all of them if you go oh and seven online and you start in losers round one and then you play a dog shit miami heretics team and then you play a dog shit Minnesota rocker team and you somehow get top six. 
That doesn't make you a top six team. I'm so, sorry. But, so then like, you're basically putting the teams that are they're beating consistently at these events, assuming they do it again. Same with Ravens, right? Assuming it, they do it again at an event where they're beating, let's say, one of these teams, because in a hypothetical sense, when you're saying these teams are a ceiling bro, cap, they're playing the same team bro, over and over. All right, Chris, Chris, if, you're, you're, uh, Chris, if you're a tenth, are you not going to rate tenth, them higher? If you're in tenth, Chris, and you beat the 11th and 12th team, do you magically jump to six? You Hell also no. you also said who cares about online when talking about all of your arguments. So I, and I'm yes, I'm bringing up land here, and they're beating the same dog shit teams. Okay, it's the same okay, argument. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, so I'm, then you, so guys, then you have to guys. rate those teams they're beating lower than guys, the teams they're beating, right? Let's move on, guys. Boys, Let's move on. If you're the boys. tenth best team Pat, and you beat Pat, the eleventh best Pat, team, Pat, then Pat, shut Pat. the fuck up. You <laughs> if you're the tenth best team. You sound you like a fucking the same thing bad, over bad, and over. Bad, bad. Move Shut on. up. No one is talking no, to you right now. I'm, we're gonna, Chris, I'm gonna move you out if you're in 10th, you're a okay. man child. Shut up. If you're in 10th and you beat the 11th best team, that does not make you better. You keep saying that. We get it. We're going to move no, on. No, we clearly don't get it because bro, we're saying that bro, they're placing trying, trying somehow to matters. All right. All right. All right. No, no, no. Pat, Chris, 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 Pat, Chris. We're moving no, on. We're moving on. No, Pat, Pat, Pat. Pat, Pat. Got to mute this guy. Now I got to mute this guy, bro. No, we got to mute this guy, bro. Okay, bro. Mute him out here, bro. Now this guy's insane. Now this guy's fucking insane. We're going to leave LAG and and you know who LAG is. Yeah, this guy's insane. Guys, back on topic. You know who LG play first That's match for the main three split? Yeah. They're going to play Vegas. So we'll get this fucking convert. I know it's online COD. I know it's Wait, Pat, COD. I have a, hold on, Pat, I have a genuine question. Is he muted? Weekend. Pat, are you here? I am muted him. I have, okay, genuine question, Pat. If they play better yeah, online, man. would you put them top six? If they weren't online buys? If they play better online, like if they mean? weren't one and if six have, or just a, dog shit, if so, they so go like four and three yeah, they, or fucking three no, and four, let, let are they top six? If, if they beat teams that actually are competing, if they consistently them, yeah. beat the teams that they are also beating on land, yeah, like where, if, like if, how we if, hold if Vegas they, right now, where we place, think they'll beat yeah, everybody. Vegas else. would argue, that, yeah, Vegas, okay. you make an argument for top six, but if you're so fucking, if you go zero and six, or even if you go, bro, if LAG went four and three. And then they still beat the eleventh and twelfth team. They're not top six. So online does mean something when it comes when it comes down to comparing teams. No, I just said it doesn't. I just said okay. if LAG go four and three, but those matches and then they are beat online. The no. dog shit two teams. It doesn't matter. Listen, it I know I know how Tommy loses fucking full hosting this show. Put a pin in it, clip it, and ship it. We'll revisit this after this major. I think that was a great question, Chris. Let's move on. I'm gonna pick the next team. This one's a little bit of a Please enigma. Please never let Ben host anything ever again. All right, whatever, bro. Please, Scott. I mean, all good. I don't know why the host is getting cooked. That's how you get dragged oh, to the channel. But let's move on geez. to the LA. Go ahead, host Ben. Go. You're doing a, Ben. You're doing a great job today. Pretty, you're doing a great it. job. Let's take, let's, take, let's, take, let's take a breather and let's talk about an easy one, Heretics. Dog, I'm talking shit. LA, no. Dog shit. What Dog about shit. Heretics and D? D. There is going to be a roster change on this team. Eric is rotating out. Real is joining this roster, but I mean, we all agree. One they started changed. screaming yesterday. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I will put Heretics above Boston in this category. No. I would. No. I mean, who cares? I Maybe. would put Boston strictly ahead of them only because of potential. That is just the exact same Miami roster that we I, have already I seen. Have they're just the recycling the, forts. Yeah, they're you recycling players. Okay. Chris, they haven't won a map on land in two stages. Yeah, on land. Yeah, they haven't given us one. I don't know, but we we We're just, just keep uh. For one. Let's keep move on online, online, to matters, Seattle Surge, bro, bro. Let's let's call it as it is, bro. They're wasting a spot in the CDL. Right, right now, simple. what decisions are making? We'll see if maybe they adapt. No, the even without, they're wasting a spot in the CDL. Uh, let's potentially let's see where the end of the season brings us. No, Seattle. let's call it how it is. Okay, let's, let's move stop on. sugarcoating shit. Okay, you just want to argue everything. Let's move no, on. No, I just want us to stop sugarcoating shit. You, we're no one sure. Okay, okay here's the fucking... thing about this team. It's a, gener okay, this a generational a, pat run. It's right? so here's, <laughs> here's the thing about. No, no, bro, we don't have to debate every topic. Bro. It's, it's not a debate. Fine. You're doing sugarcoating. You always sugarcoat. Like call bro, it how it is. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about this team. <laughs> ben, you don't have to argue back with. Is that either. fucking ahead, half okay, from man, half court? If Alec is truly as bad, go. Let Chris talk. If Alec is is truly as bad as his statistics basically made him out to be in his performances if alec is truly that bad of a player where it held this team back maybe oh four improves him maybe so, so let's speak fucking maybe. let's speak on that real quick so Wait, the rumor, maybe the rumor yeah, is, is he got the, dropped right the rumor is, he would get dropped know, for 0-4 is that yeah, the rumor so, so the rumor is that 0-4 was obviously on nikki d and pierce's team they won you know the challengers event unfortunately you know 
for Tom reverse sweeping on Steve Black in that final. 04 is not currently on a challengers team. So you'd have to assume if he's not on a challengers team, he's on a pro team. And we haven't got an official announced out of Seattle. No official some kind of minor leagues. We don't get anything official out of Seattle, yeah, though. 04 so is on the roster. Like 04 is going to be on that roster. And my question to you guys is really this. We've complained about the lack of discipline in the reactive style of respawn to Seattle team plays. Replacing a player who's a world champion, Jim, and I love Alec, but you know, on even performance at this time, but you knew that he knew the fundamentals. I think adding 04 is a very risky move from Seattle, really doubling down on that reactive risky. style of co- well, I and mean, that's the question I'm asking. Do you do you, do you agree with the change to sort of embrace the lack of structure? I mean, they're trying to do have? they're trying to do something. I mean, a it's change like a change is a change. Structure. A change is a change. No, so, I, 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 mean, that's I hear good. you on that, but the way they play listen, look at the personnel. The way they play is not what's going to change the one person no, you, you're, not, you're not wrong on that, Ben. The, the way that yeah. they play the game is okay, they're well, all maybe, over the place. Well, maybe they had a way they wanted to play, and it contradicted with Alec, and Alec obviously wasn't performing well at the same time, so it probably was just a no-brainer to get rid of him and get somebody else, and maybe they can finally start to kind of, like, play the way they want to play the game. Maybe. Maybe. Big fucking maybe. And maybe they improve. But... I'm not optimistic. Chris, can I ask you a question? All. You're, the, you're the challenger expert. Sure. Yeah. And I have no disrespect. Who the fuck is that guy? Okay. He's, a, he's an S&D he's kid. He's actually good. He's, actually he's an S&D, he's, S&D kid. He was an S&D, S&D kid. Pat. He was an S&D kid. Um, <laughs> played a lot of like off-season, uh, like Cold War type thing, I think, right? With like yeah. that, that yeah. group of players. And um, um, he ended up playing challengers. He had a shaky start, but showed some promise. He um, and Gunless and Classic and them, they took a risk by picking him up. Amazing. And he performed really well, mainly in Search and Destroy. Um, is a strong suit. Dude, so he was everything in Search that fucking. Yeah, he is that disgusting. That's but yeah, that, that is not Seattle's fucking issue. Hundred percent, I agree. Yeah, yeah. The, they they the, have uh, problems with just playing the game the right way and not doing and dumb chat, shit. Just you, just because if you think we're yapping, if you talk to any pro, especially on top teams behind the scenes, and ask what do you think is going on with the Seattle team. They're going to tell you, like, when they play against him, when they watch him play real matches. Aids, bro. There's just not conceptually Glorified the way they aids. play. feels very scrimmy. It feels very pickup. And there isn't a lot of controlling the map, controlling situations to really, like... Where do we have a mid-pack D? Favor. Yeah, D, but where? I have a mid-pack. I moved him to the mid-pack right now. I wouldn't... Listen, bro, Miami hasn't mm. won a map on land, bro. Yeah, Miami's got to be last, for sure. I agree. You know what I mean? Like, that's big, bro. They haven't I'm won a fine map with yet. That. So Seattle I feel like mid pack Seattle looks one. good here. I feel like this looks good. Seattle gave us one. It was an online match for LAG. So wait, I kind of don't like that. I kind of like him in spot. Uh, he's got to be an AR. I think he might be an AR. The sub, sub. sub. Yeah. Yeah. sub player in challengers when they just won. So. He was running a sub. Imagine oh, they so make 04 run an AR. an AR. Yeah. Imagine they make 04 yeah, run the gonna, AR. Yeah. Yeah. If they make him use the AR, I'm gonna laugh. Oh, what is he? He's a sub in challengers. All right, so he's running an AR. I wouldn't doubt, sure. bro. If they end up doing that, that'll be insane. That'll be fucking we'll crazy. We'll do, uh, we'll do predictions probably at the end of the show. But there, it's only two um, matches. So first match, they they only have two matches. They're only playing one this weekend, which is against Carolina. So we will see in that series Sleep against Carolina. <laughs> well, Where would you guys? I like uh, can't speak to that part, but uh, you know, I like to watch all the matches and bet on them. But uh, Seattle, I hey, think putting them in the other spot, I'm agree with. Does anyone disagree? Let's, let's talk about Sam's. No, let's talk about Sam's team's neck. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's get him. Let's talk about Sam. Did they make a the change? Warrior? Yeah, Joe yeah, they brought back Afro. Uh, I don't think this moves the needle at all, to be honest. I think Seriously? Afro was their best search player, and I think Joe was better than Afro at respawn, so I think they kind of just like trade there. I don't really think this does much. Um, invasion being removed was LAT's every single series hard point, yeah. um, so that's tough. I don't think that like the Joe move really changes much, to be honest. I'm thinking C tier. I just don't know where, personally. Because I don't mm. think they're at bottom of the pack D tier, but I think they I got think a lot C, to work I on. I think C is okay. Bro, I'm, I think putting they the can... teams, I'm putting the teams that place well in land ahead of the other teams. Like, like at least in a C tier. It's such a weird one to rank because, I'm like, fine with, like, first in D, low C. I, I'm fine I with think they're one. better than I don't think they're, D. They're, they're, I don't think they're D, bro. Like, that's disrespectful. Yeah. They, they least... got back to back. I like, bro. I'm. The, they got back to back last. I mean, they didn't. Yeah, like, they, they, they had a good they online stage, the but they're, yeah. But some of these teams don't have good online stages, and they get last. And at least yeah. LA, when they play good teams, like it's a fight. Like they play the game. Like the other teams, they literally spawn out, put their controllers down. So like, I'm not putting them in D. Well, let's I, put agree, these, I agree with Sam. The... They lost to LAG, bro. <laughs> uh, I don't know. 
I, I will put them back at C, but they better not let us down by putting. I mean, it's either it's either first yeah. and D or last and Wait, C. Wait, they lost to LAG spot. both times at both the Bro, they can't yes. beat LA. Bro, they have a wow. mental against this franchise. I don't. It's the weirdest win loss record against two franchises. And I just don't understand because of the quality of teams on the Thief side. Mm. Why this? They still weird fucking issue against this LAG franchise mm. across all different titles. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> it's Very okay. Odd. I hope they do well. As well, always. Thieves, look, I feel like it's a decent spot for Thieves. Top of bottom to see. Top they have C, the whatever. easiest schedule Don't of like anyone us, the bro. entire season. Yeah, though. listen to this fucking schedule. This schedule is insane. Vegas, okay, tricky matchup. Miami, Carolina, Rock, or Boston, a lot of opportunity. Teams they also beat the last split. Seattle, okay, also opportunity. And then Optic, like they can, they have they one can top find four five or four in there before, yeah. So I agree. I mean, they so, found what four with the hardest strength of schedule almost last split. So let's see what they do this time. They 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 have to get points this split. They are in uh, a territory where they're all about fifteen points off of the eight spot right now. So if they farm this split a little bit, get twenty or thirty online, and actually like win a series on land, they'll give themselves a spot in that last split. Now their last split is actually not that easy. I'm gonna read to you the teams. LAG. So obviously that one is a big one for champs qualification. Boston, another big one. Could be in a you know. We all eliminated for one of those teams. Carolina, another team that's gonna be scrapping there. And they play Toronto, Fades, Vegas, and New York. Like Damn. they have their they basically had the front end of the schedule is like teams all at their level, fighting for points, and then you have the gauntlet at the end, assuming that Vegas is playing at the same level. It's now or never for the Steve's team. All right, let's move on. I have bottom of C right now. I think that's kind of a good spot. Their top of D, bottom of C is where I think it was an okay spot to put them. If anybody has any uh anybody wanna say no. anything, go ahead. All right, let's move on. Carolina Royal Ravens. Um, top of C. They are a skinned LAG team, so top they're the exact same team. Wherever LAG is, they got to be. Yeah, they, they are. <laughs> wait, they, wait, they, wait, they, they got similar They're the exact so, same so roster, So you guys bro. weren't trolling, Other right? They didn't make a change. No, Carolina? did not make a change. Or Carolina, no. Nah, wow. Carolina stayed the same. I was surprised by that, too, but they stayed the same. Wow. Well, yeah. I don't know, because uh, did you guys hear what Austin said earlier? What? What? He said he said he personally would take significantly less money to pay, play with Gwyn. Y'all y'all heard that right? Yeah, I wasn't aware that. Heard that. Yeah, because if, because I, I, I think Gwyn's good. Gwyn, he's good like for that. Good he's he, he's good for that spot. As Gwyn's doing. stock is so high amongst like actual people in the league that like have pull. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm. so His think stock Austin, is so high. Oh, Hunt, so do you think Austin is annually to replace Feller or Clay on this team? I fuck if I'm Austin, I am 100. percent If I'm Carolina, I am. <laughs> like, yeah. So. Carolina, what's wait? Tell you hold on. That means up. that means Austin would have to move to North Carolina. Wow. I think he could Damn, be his out. neighbor. He's yeah, you guys can Atlanta hang out and shit. This is all over. But like, listen to this split because this could get interesting. Seattle, okay. New York, LAG Thieves, Toronto, Phase <sighs> Rocker. Carolina, I think, is the actual hardest schedule of any team this split. They do. They have the hardest schedule. And the remaining schedule. split after that because they got LAG, New York, Phase Thieves, Optic. Miami and Boston. So I actually think that Carolina's remaining fucking fourteen matches are actually are probably some of the hardest of any team. Um, it, so I think they yeah, have the I single hardest strength of schedule for this split. I kind of see that for, but I agree with you about the skin LG thing. You know they were S and E was a little bit iffy, but they definitely got it going at this event. They suck think, online and manage top sixes. Yeah, and they just they just win S and Ds on land. Didn't they have uh, an easy schedule last time and they went like two and five? Well, that's probably. the thing. This is a, the know. classic play down, play up to people with Carolina. Obviously, not really gonna. Top only, four teams in the months of bottom eight. Ranking yeah. them is just hard. Like I just, I'm just pitting them against each other, and I just think if they played each other in a land match, I think Ravens would win. So that's why I put them yeah. at the, ahead of late LAG. Well, I think that's a, I think that's a good ranking. You just went to bat so hard for LAG, and then you think Carolina would beat them all, man. Yeah, yeah I think they're both. Either way, I think they're both good in certain aspects, at least against each other. And I think uh, I'm pretty sure I feel like I've watched them play already once, and I think Ravens won, but Carolina, I can't remember. Carolina beat them online. Yeah, okay. Stage. Yeah, that's probably why. Yo, so I'm just let's, like, uh, uh, let's move on. We got two matches on Friday. We got Atlanta yep. FaZe going up against Minnesota. We got LAG going up against Vegas. Uh, we'll start with Atlanta FaZe versus Minnesota. I got Atlanta FaZe in that one. I don't know if we'll have any objections Skip. there. Atlanta FaZe. Uh, <laughs> and then we have an LAG Vegas, which I think is going to be a good one. I feel like this one can go either way. I'm actually going to go Vegas Legion in this one. I actually think Vegas has have looked pretty good. I'm... Uh, I feel like Vegas have definitely looked like a team that's having good practice. Like, I feel like they're getting better. They've made changes. They've upgraded. And uh, and they've shown moments of, 
keeping up with great teams. And they just, uh, they have to really work on that, those round 11s, Matt 5s. They have to work on that shit. But Vegas is going to win their first one. Somebody in chat said Vegas for 3 hey, I got I got Vegas 3 2. Who do you guys got? <laughs> They're going to win their first game. I have Vegas, uh, Vegas well. 3 0. Sam, go. Vegas. I can't uh, pick LAG. I have to pick Vegas. I am picking Vegas because. I could see some new map cheese in the series, and I trust Vegas to match that map a little bit quicker than LAG's, those maps. Hopefully, don't let me down. I got Vegas 3-1. Yo, can I ask a question? Do you guys not feel bad for challenger players? I do. What oh, so. I, cause just looking at who got picked up. Gunless. Yeah, Siege Beans, going through it. Like, and Standy. Oh, yeah, a lot of it's just recycled. Ba basically, Joe Deceives. Like, oh. basically everyone who was just in the league within the last... 12 months the thing well, is though like a lot of those players that are getting picked up you end up going down to challenges doing well like another another couple people if they were to make more changes like cap would probably get picked up that guy's fucking was was in the league already as well like a lot I'm of people that are it doesn't the, make didn't Dak have some trials service Dak, i'm just yeah i, I, I Dak heard Dak say a little bit I heard Dak was considered bit. it's 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 gonna be rare there's always gonna be like maybe a maybe like three four people like every year they're gonna get looked at that weren't prior pros and then everything else is gonna be prior pros or people still in so i feel like mm -hmm. it's i feel like it's not the path to pro it's the x pro training grounds 100 percent. i mean go, I, I think go down talk. to challengers and learn something and then come yeah. back yeah, yeah. I, I, th I, think we, like, I think we talked about this i think we're sort of a little bit in between generations of like Players. I think Gwyn actually has got a lot of potential out of this current group and just played well. And I think right now those two are really leading uh, a lot of the rookie kind we need, of situation. We need, we need Wee Man in the league, some other bro. potential kind of curveballs there. Yeah, Wee, Wee Man, Man would be cool. Wee Man, is the AR, be the, the, Wee Man is the main AR stigma, bro, of all time, bro. That guy has yeah. been gross for years in challengers. Like, literally placing to consistently putting up stats like that guy's actually good as fuck i guess he's never getting finally it. got his chance took him yeah, five years yeah i think, but, yeah. I think, I think we can't chance. really hate on pentagram getting in there i mean he's he's been waiting no. a minute now well, so like yeah listen, i don't agree with the changes over there but i'm glad, glad. like he yeah, has yeah. an opportunity because if he can prove us wrong then then great awesome if it was him. another well, recycled player come back in we would lose even more full i feel like at least I, somebody i that, agree you know but, uh, yeah, but two, him two, of all people deserve match it. cheese on friday chat so you know what that probably means we'll probably do a community question segment on friday so you got a couple of days to figure out your questions and we'll probably use a discord stage to make sure when you tune in that show live you're ready to participate in that segment but you want me to pause yeah hit the, the fucking pop man here? put us out of here bro put us out I Ben J did, did, uh, one second. try hosting the show today let me know what you guys think uh, uh ben J hosting the sheet took zero the lead out today. Ten. zero out of ten bad <laughs> zero out of ten great he did great. He did great. Wait, Yukon smoked Purdue. Wow. Did they? I thought Ben did a great job. I thought he yeah, yapped a little ben bit sometimes, fine. but I think he did a great job. I think he did I a phenomenal job. I thought he was a great job. host, but Pat didn't listen to me when I told him to shut the fuck up. He says, no, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Bad, Benji. Benji had a scene stepping up to the plate. He's got those fucking slippies on yet again. Stepping up to the green. The poles are coming in. He steps up and he sinks the motherfucking paw. Minor. Look at Ben J and his team. Look at him go. Get some W bro, spams had, in the chat. I had a fucking... Uh, I was putting good on stream today, bro. No, you're going to have to repot. There was no pole. No, what? there was no pole, Ben. There was no, there was no pole. I gotta use the bathroom, the bro. Pole. We gotta wrap this it. up. I'm out of here, bro. No, no, bro. People want their channel. Oh points. my god. Wait, Ben, you gotta take us out, bro. You hosted people the... want their channel points. That's Shout crazy. out Gersh for doing a phenomenal well, job on socials. No pull on this one. Okay, we're doing a prediction. All right. Well, I'll wait for the prediction to do it. I'll no, you gotta go right you. now. They gotta get the predictions in right now. You gotta hit this shit. Uh, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Five, but my knees already hurt from fucking golfing for oh, three days. Oh, stop bro. being like... a big old wussy. It hit the ball. You never win the replay. He's good. He's good. He's all right. He's chilling. Here he goes. He's stepping up to the plate. Slip is on. Pole is up. Get your predict. The predictions are coming in fast. Benjay. Blue golf ball. He's going to strike and he sinks it yet again. Two for two. Look at this guy. It's clinical. He Yo, makes Sam, it look easy. Right, but someone said Magnum I can't like stand, bro. It's because my fucking sit in this stupid office chair after I've been golfing all day. And of course, There's my knees fucking down. Wah, wah, wah. Cry about it. Take us out, Ben. Old. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Uh, we're going to do our usual shout outs always. First off, if you want to watch this show after we record it, check it out on YouTube. We're also on all audio platforms. Anger.fm slash the flank shout to Gersh. Always doing it. What, Tom? The fuck did you just say?
Anchor.fm Make sure to like, comment, yeah. subscribe, and anchor that FM says the flank to check out audio audio sites around. Go follow at the flank on Twitter. Girls doing a phenomenal job running socials as usual. Take care, brush your hair, and we'll see you guys next time on another episode of the flank. Man, shout out to Ben J for hosting today's Yo, show. Yo, Ben just got pleasure. bitched in the outro. That's crazy. Fucking outro. Ben just got wait. bitched in the outro. <laughs>